you know, and maybe he comes into my chat and he's like, yo, I, I like what armor is good. Like, I feel like I'm just one tap. And then it's like, oh my God, Pandora's box. What, you're new. What am you, I? You might as well be asking people, what's your experience with vaccines? Yeah. <laughs> does, it, does it work for you? And you're going to yeah, end up with exactly. people that like, it killed my entire family. <laughs> people that are like i'm now completely immune to literally Bro. everything to it's oh it's that it's all a bunch of anecdotal Dude, real what's up everyone welcome to the podcast a show dedicated to talk about all the poggers things in life like music content creation and video games i am one of your co-hosts jesse kazam and i'm veritas <laughs> that was so cozy i'm veritas that's me <laughs> what's up man how you doing Good, good. Uh, do a, bit, a little bit better than poor Bill Kerman, who uh, Bill just Kerman. landed on, just landed on Min Miss, and I don't know if you were watching, but I had to. Uh, I was coming in much too hot, had like no <laughs> fuel. Did you see how it ended? No, I I had the tab up, but I was like answering emails or something, and I heard I, you laughing, and I looked over. I feel like I missed it. it I well, I like quick saved right before already past the point of like <laughs> no return it was just coming in way too hot full gas the other way and it's like like drip 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 you hear it run out of fuel so i fucking instantly did an eva which is like get yep. out on the side of the capsule <laughs> hit the jet pack and just kind of like Shh, and it's just like Whoop. and then the ship is like <laughs> <laughs> so now he's just chilling there on one of the moons of curb uh Kerbin, and uh, i'm gonna have to right now i literally have two Kerbin stranded one on the moon and one on Minmus, the other moon. Isn't this uh the isn't this the story of like the Martian or something? <laughs> Wasn't he pretty just much a yeah. Kerbin? Yeah, Matt Matt Kerbin. Matt, Matt Kerbin. Damon. <laughs> Matt Kerbin. Yeah. But uh but I actually was playing uh Tarkov the last couple Dude, of days. Dude, you came and when I, then I was surprised to see you on Kerbal today when I popped over once you went live. But tell me about you said that you were you were having fun whoa playing tarkov yeah i was getting so arena was just i'm just getting bored um yeah. like it's it, it's kind of soul crushing yeah. um when you grinding 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 and then like you get close to the end it's like all right another 10 hours yeah and then i'll get like the hk kit and then all i think about is part of the motivation of like another game play another game is making progress towards a thing it just like yeah. doesn't matter what it is and so then like once you unlock the end kit i use it twice and i'm like i'm yeah now what? there's no progress being made so what am i doing yeah, yeah. exactly which is uh, one of the issues i talked about in in one of my my arena issues video yeah um was just how like your progression is tied to using shit you don't want to use you get there and it's like you're not satisfied yeah unless there's some other kind of yeah you know progression um so and then they just had uh well another bit that made me annoyed was there's still just like a handful of cheaters that just are straight up oh they just queue snipe and we get in with them every single every single game because there's not enough people yeah playing so if they're remotely high rated they we just get against them every single time um and they're like super Freaking toxic, screaming like slurs over L, void them. Dude. Oh. Yeah. Um so yeah, it was just kind of getting bored with that. So I was like, I went and I played Diablo 4, season three just came out. I played it for like I an hour, that. and I'm like, yeah. I'm bored. Yeah. I'm like went to go play another game, played it for like 20 minutes. I'm like, fuck, I'm bored. I'm like, maybe I'll try Tarkov. Like, I don't know. I just need something. Yeah. And I went into ground zero. Um and I want to say I did like 10 or 15 raids. At least it felt like that. Maybe it okay. was like eight. Or maybe it was 14. Maybe it was a lot. I don't know. But it was like something like that. And I think I only died like three times. Hell yeah. And every other raid, I got like 20 kills, five PMC kills, like all headshots Jeez. on everything. It was like, uh, it was just really satisfying. And, and the first ones I went in with a Glock just a, a glock and like a the rubber grip and i would take out like two man duos who were rocking like yeah some some decent gear for you know there were there were a couple like level 17s level 20s yeah that were rocking like tier five stuff yeah um, 
Dude, pistols feel so good. So good. Everything feel I haven't used any oh. uh any bolties really, but yeah. everything that I've used so far, the SMGs feel good, the <laughs> ARs feel good. Yeah. Bolties, I people keep telling me that bolties feel worse. But I have been using them to get some quests done, like Tarkov Shooter, and I don't, I don't feel it. I don't trust my judgment enough to say that I don't believe those people that Bolties feel worse, uh, mm -hmm. because I'm the guy that didn't realize my teammates were stuttering until you told me, and then I was like, oh my god, I can't unsee it, right? So like, I believe them, but it's not so bad that I go ew every time I shoot a Bolty. You know what I mean? We were, I had some. Uh, Pretty nutty shots. I got like a 500. I saw you sniping on interchange, and I was just like, oh yeah, sniping with the um the what the fuck is that? The DVL. Uh, the, the DVL. It's just like so satisfying. You have a good optic. Butter, just... dude. Dude, butter. It's so good. Yeah. Um, I died in a player scab that raid, Lamau. Um, uh, but yeah. So everything does feel good. So it's funny, like, um, the. 762 a like 762 by 39 got the short end of the stick with the with the recoil nerf or with the recoil change and it almost mm -hmm. feels intentional because it doesn't make sense because like i did this earlier I, I wasn't even trying to like get into an argument about it i was just in the hideout i've been trying to do that i've been trying to channel my inner desmond and just like between raids just like rip in the hideout like target practice tracking practice and stuff like that and i had an rd and i was like man i was like something feels weird it feels like i get more backward motion and upward motion like it, it there's something about semi-autoing the rd it just felt more a little mm. i couldn't even I, I couldn't even describe Wait, it is that the 545 semi-auto gun no the rd the r704 that's like the mutant but oh i don't think i've even different. seen that yeah um just another 762 by 39 more like ar style modernized gun that and the mutant are just like the meta we have been the meta for wipe a few wipes and it was just something about it. I'd been semi-autoing it. And it's funny because, like, I gamify when I think about things. And I get that that sometimes, you know, the foundation, you come at something if someone else is on a different foundation. So I gamified a little bit. So when I think about the RD and the Mutant, I see them basically exactly the same as an M4 or an HK. In my head, as a video game, it's like pistols, SMGs, ARs, you know, LMGs. That's, you know, that's always yep. the scale. So I just see it as an AR. I, I see it as a... It's like a 545 AK or a 556 gun. But people are always like, it's a bigger caliber. It's a bigger caliber. It's a bigger caliber, which is probably true. But then I was like, I was like, okay, chat, explain this. <laughs> and I grabbed an SA-58 with a 50 rounder and the loudenser on it, the BMD compensator. And it felt three times as smooth to just tap, 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 semi-auto versus the RD. I was like, it's not bigger than this. It's not a bigger caliber than this. So something it felt it almost feels intentional because of how much the RD and the mutant dominated the meta for so many wipes that it got a little bit of the short mm -hmm. end of the stick. It's usable. Like I would say both of those guns feel better to semi-auto than they did last wipe, but both of those guns feel worse to full auto than they did last wipe. And then whenever anyone tries to come at me with like a well, that's you know, it's bigger, it's realistic, it's like grab a grab a SA58 grab a MDR, the big one, or grab the new spear. The new spear feels like an M4 shooting 308 almost. Yeah. It's crazy. So it, so it feels... those. Are the, that's the only thing along the recoil train for me is like 7.62 by 39 AKs all, all the way up feel a little bit, a little brutal. But other than that, it's been feeling great. Interesting. Yeah, no, I've been having a, a lot of luck with uh, the like PP19 Vityaz, oh, with, uh, the Glock, um, the the P226, um, the AK74 is like somehow is like the best fucking like platform yeah. in the game. Like it's, you put the dude, suppressor on it with a little dot and, and a 60 rounder and golden. there's no, yeah. Um, now I will say that, so now that I've experienced a little bit the armor stuff after having oh, done yeah. maybe 20 or 30 raids, which yeah. is an extremely small sample size. For sure. I, I can say, first of all, there, there was, I want to say like of all the deaths I had, there's like five deaths. One of them was I swung, a, I heard a guy and we were like, 
bah, 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 you yeah. know, it's like the fucking meme with everybody just shooting <laughs> yeah, everybody. Yeah. And I had literally one HP left in my chest. Mm. One HP. Everything blacked out, head blacked, one HP, fucking clutch you know, the heel. Yeah, broke, yeah. Broke tall, like stop the bleeds. <laughs> yeah. One HP ended up healing and taking like the the flare, you know, the flare exit. Yeah. Yep. You know, like near the flare exit, like a kind of across the street, there's like a staircase that kind of yep. goes up like this. Yep. I know exactly. There's like a dead body up there. It was at the top of the stairs where I swung and fought the guy. Yeah. Um, and I killed him. <laughs> and I think I was using like a mixture of like PP and like T, like five four five. Yeah. Um, and so, and that was like what saved me i don't know the armor was yeah. basically untouched yeah and i i don't know what he was i forget what he was shooting me with but it was that and then i would say the other 80 percent of of the deaths were dead to a face shot from someone the the one that really fucking pissed me off dude was on woods um because i finally went and got the fucking jaeger letter just yeah. so i could unlock jaeger um I was like kind of running around all of a sudden I was getting like sniped at. I got hit a bunch, ran up to like a rock to like block. And yeah. it was like, you know, nades come in explosion, explosion. And then, then I hear like, <laughs> like I hear shots coming from that area from like yeah. a suppressed AK or something. I'm like, okay, like that's the guy. But I'm like, oh, it's like a little off to the side. And there was no indication that it would, was at me. No suppression effect, no mm -hmm. bullets whizzing by. It just sounded like distant, hundred meter away bullet uh, you know shots yeah. were, it was like okay the, he's like third party he's now maybe this uh -huh. is my time to in the third the third shot and it's like where's this why is it when my teammate is next to me shooting that way i get a suppression effect yeah and i hear ricochets and all kinds of other bullshit right but when someone's yeah. shooting at so it's like the game like i i don't care what anyone says the game killed me there yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it it gave me every indication that those shots were not at me. Yes. Everything I've been trained with Tarkov, which is if there's any bullets remotely near you, you have the suppression effect. Like that's your hint. Yes. You know, uh, there's no bullets hitting the ground, trees, anything near me. Um, so I kind of got cucked there. That was that was a little bit frustrating. Yeah. Um, but uh, but otherwise, yeah. Like so far, the armor hasn't done anything for me and i've i haven't swapped any plates at any point yeah i just haven't had an opportunity yeah um, once again i just find so rarely i swapped plates today or yesterday and i was like this is a cool feeling and, and i still stand by that by the way i love the ability to do that i just think that the system isn't set up in a way to encourage it because still, yeah. even after we talked last week, or it was it was two weeks ago, because uh, last week we were with Geeks, where I was just like, I'm just never walking away from fights with zeroed armor. And that just used to be a thing I did all the time. You know what I mean? Like, it was just so, it was such a common thing. Such a common thing. Even all the way back, it just to be like, to get into a fight and be like, oh, I gotta go. I, I You know, like, my armor's zeroed, bro. Which, once again, I want to be careful here. I'm not complaining. I don't mind... <laughs> that my armor lasts longer. I actually want that. I, I love that. But what I'm saying is it's just hard to suss out the... Um, it's just hard to suss out how it's all working. You know what I mean? Like, it... it, yeah. it, it like, what... I, I, it's so funny because I'm, I'm air wings in my chat all the time and he's obviously like as into the weeds in this as you can be. And I kind of... I don't want to get into the weeds. And so a lot of my time is spent as... as a lot of my time is spent thinking about just what does it practically mean? Like, you know, I, I don't know if this is a great analogy, but you can like make the math problem longer and longer and longer if you want. But if the answer is always the same, then what are we doing? So it's like, so I'm trying to think like practically to the player. And I've been, I'm trying to ask chat, like, you know, what do you guys think? Do you guys think your armor's is saving you? Just like, what is the, what is the player experience? Because once again, we, we talk about this all the time. You can't expect a dude that's like, Yo, I saw this. I saw this video. I saw Shroud playing. I picked up the game. You know, and maybe he comes into my chat and he's like, "Yo, I, I, like, what armor's good? Like, I feel like I'm just one tap." And then it's like, "Oh my God, Pandora's box! What? You're new. What am you, I?" You might as well be asking people, "What's your experience with vaccines? Yeah, <laughs> does, it, does it work for you?" 
and you're going to yeah, end up with exactly. people that like it killed my entire family. <laughs> People that are like, I'm now completely immune to literally Bro. everything. To it's oh it's that it's all a bunch of anecdotal for real, for real. So so it's so hard. So I've been just I've been just spending time being like, what's the practical end result here? And I still to this day am no closer to an opinion on that than on Wipe Day. Like I I feel sometimes I feel like oh my god like. My not only did my armor save me like so clearly, like my thorax is, you know, one or two HP and like I took a bunch of shots and my armor's not destroyed. Sometimes I'm like, that is such a cool experience. Like he almost got me, but I didn't die. And when I heal up, I feel like I feel confident enough in my gear to uh, stay in this raid. I don't have to leave because I don't have armor. It's, it's like other games, Halo or Call of Duty, where yeah. you heal like o over time yeah. and you get back to full as opposed to Tarkov, which is like you're permanently shields exactly. down. Yeah, exactly. So like I've had moments like that, but I just also feel anecdotally that the one taps has it just increased. It's just like so many more one taps from AI, from players, um, it just doesn't feel, yeah, I mean, like, so, so I don't know, so, so I still, I'm interested that you said that you kind of felt the same way, where you were like, I don't, I don't really know what, what's going on here, it, it just, I, and then, you know, we have a bunch of, like we've said before, we have a bunch of people who are claiming things are bugs without a whole lot of evidence, like some super superficial testing. Then we have a lot of people that are doing really deep testing that are saying that there might be some bugs, but we're not sure. And then none of that is being acknowledged by BSG on it, what's a bug and what's not. In the patch the other day, they had like a super vague line in there that said fix some issues with damage and penetration of armors. And it's like, so we, so we're like, as testers, we're just like sussing out. Me and him were like, let's just keep an eye on our armors and see if things are helping. It's hard to know, you know what I mean? And so it uh it's, it's just like been it's hard like hard to interpret what's happening. To I shouldn't have opened up this Pandora's box, but the the, the metaphor is good enough. <laughs> just keep it I'm rolling. Gonna, I'm gonna stick with it. This isn't a discussion about vaccines, but like the it's it's akin to we are in like a CDC study about the yeah. efficacy and we we're the lab rats. Yeah. We don't know if we're in the control group or not. Yeah. And we are and we're basically trying to there's a thousand people in the case study and seven people got along on the side. They're like, let's figure out the, what the results are based on what 100%. we think without knowing who the controls are. That's literally what we're doing. 100%. Um, 100%. Yeah. And then they're like, and then they come back and they're like, we changed the formula. Triple and, blind study, LOL. And, and we're supposed to be like, you know, do, well, did you increase the dosage? Did you decrease the dose? Should I feel more? Should I feel less? Am I going to feel sick? We don't even know. We just see mm -hmm. some vague, we changed some parameters thing. So it's been a, yeah, man, I don't know. Like, I, I just, once again, I don't know what all I can really do at this point is hope that the science that the people that are really doing is helpful in some way to BSG, like that they're looking at the clips and maybe BSG goes, oh, well, their methodology wasn't great there, but they did figure this out. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, well, my hope is that the people who are doing the science can provide some value to BSG. And my hope is that whatever metrics they have to, when they look at the game, you know, man in the CCTV room with all the monitors and they're tracking the stats. If there's somewhere a computer that tracks armpit hit count, you know what I mean? Like, I just hope that they're collecting good information because I just uh, I just don't know. I, I even still I don't know what's going on. I just don't I don't know what's supposed to be. Um, and it feels like th this really feels like um, a combination of a lot of really. Um, it feels like the culmination of a bunch of things all coming to a head on an issue and what I'm having a hard time parsing out is like what what I think is happening is I think a, a lot of people are blaming a lot of other Tarkov issues on armor because armor changed and I'm dying a lot right and so it's yep, easy to absolutely. be like that, I'm that dying a, a lot subset of it for sure it, it might be 90 percent it might be nine exactly and so it's and and I find I'm doing that too and I think it's a culmination of a lot of things 
Um, we have, you know, bugs that have been in the game, like fragmentation's always been bugged in some way, but then they kind of just absorbed that bug in with some of the, like I saw you tweet in Airwing where he was like, they kind of just accepted that bug. Technically, it's still bugged, but how... The things that have like 3 million damage yeah. and 100% fragmentation chance, they never fragment because their pen is one. Exactly. So they just inflated the damage value. So it's like, to make at what it. point is a bug not a bug when you build around the bug and leave the bug in? And then... Their, their suspicions of other issues with fragmentation, but they're borderline impossible to test and reproduce because the game doesn't tell you when it fragments. There's also other things too, like once again, separate from the armor, like I, I guess uh, this system feels like it would work really well um, if the hard plates covered um the whole body if the hard plates functioned the way armor did last wipe does that make sense if you basically if you have a hard plate it covered your neck so no arms no neck but like the whole thorax including your armpit because that's how armor used to work right you put it on and it covered every piece of your thorax but before yeah. like last wipe there was a difference between a slick and a Gen 4 assault because the Gen 4 assault had arm armor. So last wipe, a slick covered your entire thorax, and but your it stomach. didn't cover your stomach. Gazelle covered your stomach, but slicks didn't. Slicks, they don't cover your stomach. They don't cover your arms. So I think this system would work really well if just the hard plates worked exactly like that. Where the hard plates covered the torso area, and then that was the, the soft armor inserts. Some Karasa has neck armor, the Thor armor doesn't. The Gen 4 has yeah. arm armor, the Defender doesn't. The yeah. Gazelle has stomach armor, the Slick doesn't. If it's it as, oppo as opposed to, imagine if every armor, the, I want I almost said fabric, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the soft armor was like a hoodie. <laughs> and then yeah. you had plates on the front and the back to cover your heart, your spine, you yeah. know, or whatever. Um, that, I, th I, so I think that would work as well. Because it would prevent like the BBs and all that Correct. shit. From it would, one it would prevent you. the Magnum Buck from one tapping, but it wouldn't prevent the M80 from one tapping when you invested into the, yeah. the class five armor. You know what I mean? So I would take that over the system we have now, where that's such a great way to explain it too, where the Aramid inserts function as a hoodie where it covered everything. Um, and then the, the plates were just the physical plates. I would even prefer, I, not prefer, I would prefer to test one step past that were the plates because then you would still have a scenario where plates never covered stomach, neck, arm. Does that make sense? I guess, I guess I'm, 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 I'm coming at this argument ass backwards. Before, your plate armor, which was your class 5, covered everything. So a Gen 4 full would have your class 5 plate cover your stomach, your back, your sides, your arm, your, your neck, because I think the Gen 4 has a neck thing, and uh, your stomach and, and all that kind of stuff. It feels like we ripped the Band-Aid all the way to the other side where it went from the Class 5 covering, I mean, neck to crotch, to now the Class 5 covers, you know, 48% of your front thorax. You know what yeah. I mean? Just eat, eat, eat. And so, like, what if we had split that difference? Because if we had removed one layer, okay, the Class 5 covers your whole thorax, but now it no longer covers your neck, your arm, your stomach, your groin, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So yeah, that yeah. would have been a middle ground where now those Aramid inserts are the ones protecting all of those things, which is why you might want this armor because it's got class three Aramid inserts as opposed to class uh, two. That, and that would have been, that would have been, if I'm thinking about it right, I think that would have been like overall a buff to pretty much all the armors, right? Um, well, it would have been a nerf to something like a Gen 4 because the Gen 4 would have gone from class five covering every part of your body so now the class five oh, only right. covering your torso and now everything else was class three. It still would have been a nerf to most armors, but it would have been a halfway point nerf. And all that but but, but aren't there also but with there with how it is now, is there not on like center <laughs> of your chest two layers now? Or is there only one? It is two. It is well, uh, some only have one, but most have two. Because I would, because I would think like a Gen Four having two on the chest and then like less on the arms yeah. is probably better. Maybe, maybe you're right. Yeah. Then, then, but I mean, again, it all but depends once again, on where you and, get shot. Well, and 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 this is where it gets a little subjective. In my opinion, 
that would have been a, a that would have been a fun and functional give and take where the the give was now you don't have this five armor covering class five armor covering your whole body anymore but you have two layers where you need it potentially yeah. extending firefights right so like i kind of would have liked that middle ground a little bit because and, and i say all that to say that was kind of like definitely a, a bit of a rant on the armor uh because it just yeah you know you you have you have two things Two things that I perceive could be, once again, every single word I'm saying on, tonight, on tonight's episode is really just like me kind of like questioning and throwing out ideas. I don't, I still don't hold any opinion very close, very tightly about this, but what we, two things are happening. One is 50% of the armors are now useless garbage that like everyone in the community is like, stop, don't use that because you have things like troopers the trooper armor used to be one of the best class four, repaired really well, high durability. The aramid inserts are the exact same size as the plate, which mm -hmm. provides very little coverage of your thorax. So, yeah. so much of your thorax is exposed. Your your collarbone is exposed, your shoulders exposed, your armpits exposed, the lot. Things like slicks are the same way. Where the uh, because literally like a carassa, you can actually I like up a hex grid in woods on a dude that was just dead, not looted, and I was like yeah. hell yeah, and it just had class three plates in it. I'm like fuck, man, yeah. hell? <laughs> that's actually funny, um, because you can look at a carassa and you can actually see that the aramid insert is physically larger than the plate, meaning that you have protection. But so one of the things that's happening is just like a bunch of the armors are now instantly garbo. Like the uh, AACPC class five armored rig that had like the two by two, the three one by threes. It was like the green. Mm -hmm. It had like the duct tape. One of the best armors in the game. Garbo now because it's got class five plates, class three or two airman inserts that are exactly the same size. TV 110 rig gone. Absolute Garbo. It's the as, even though it looks big, it's the same thing. So, so much exposed. So you're having a bunch of armors that are just like not worth using anymore. And then on the flip side, you're, what you're having is like this de-incentivizing to run some of the best stuff. I've been running Defenders. I've been running uh, Redut Armors, which are some of the best ones now. I've been and I literally, have, I kill people, I pull, I, I grab their like class four and five armors. Yeah. I get back to my stash. I unequip them and I go in with no armor. Yeah. 100%. No helmet. For sure. And, and and it just feels the the other thing that's happening is this de-incentivizing to wear the better armor because there's just like because it just doesn't seem like once again, it seems like it works in the very rare cases that all of your enemies' shots land exactly in the A zone of your torso. You're like, oh hell yeah, right? But if you turn mm -hmm. to run away from an AI, you turn to run away from a guy, or like you said in that thing before, there's a second guy, you know, you're facing the guy, you're fighting his teammates at a 45 angle, he clips you in the armpit. And there's something to be said for like in a perfect world. In a perfect fight where like the Tarkov raid is feeling good, you didn't feel like you got desynced, you heard the audio of the guy, and he hits you with like a bolty shot in the face, there's a part of you that goes, nice shot. Like, nice shot. Because, yep. because we've been conditioned for so long, headshots are harder to hit and therefore more rewarding. I've never once got hit in the armpit and been like, damn, nice shot. We both know if that guy comes into my chat, we both know it was an accident. He hits me in the armpit there, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And when I kill somebody with an armpit shot, when I one tap them and their armor's fresh, I, I'm not going nice shot. I'm like, oops. You know what I mean? So, so there's, that, there's, I think there's some sort of element to this where even the, the value of getting one tapped, of at least knowing that dude hit something, hit a nutty shot, that's saving stripped the away. Saving grace yeah. of, of a nice shot. That's stripped away. And you're just like, okay. So I don't know. It's uh it's been interesting. It's been interesting for sure. But what I was saying earlier is that this is that this isn't even all an armor issue because what we're seeing is a bunch of other things as well, like the scavs right now. The scavs are just like insane. They're they're you know they're worse than they've ever been, or, or as as bad as they've ever been. I shouldn't say worse than they're as bad as they've ever been. As far as like, and I was I was gonna say they've the scavs felt really good for me. Oh, now, again, dude, I have limited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's in twenty ra in twenty raids, I killed 
fucking seven million scavs, and and I don't think any of them shot me with a single bullet. Yeah. No. Okay. I, maybe I got hit a couple of times, but it was like yeah. arm shot, bang, 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 missing, 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 leg shot. When I when I'm too lazy to like, yeah, fix two blacked out arms, and I'm right near the X fill. I'm like, come on, one more scav kill. I've been getting like 19 scav kills. Yeah. So, dude, you can I, ask Cambino, dude. <laughs> you can ask Cambino. Yesterday. I'm I'm 50 million rubles full kitted right now. Full kitted M4s, class five armors, best helmets in the game. Yesterday, I got one tapped by AI scavs five to seven times. Like he, the, him and Valiant were bringing my stuff out all day. Yesterday, like yeah. I, I didn't. I I was I I I really enjoy playing with those two guys. So I was keeping the vibes high. Ham was like, dude, Jesse, like you're getting the business today, bro, by these AI scavs. I died to AI scavs more than I died to players yesterday. And and it and, and it was like, and it's fine because I have 50 million rubles and I have two teammates that are bringing me my gear. But it's like, hmm. I'm wearing the best stuff in the game. Like, why? I don't I don't get it. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just because one, once again, because in the past, if I had a class five armor, it covered my whole thorax. But you get the you get the lead slug to the armpit. You get the lead slug to the neck. You get the lead slug to the collarbone. If you're wearing a trooper armor, you're dead, bro. You're dead. Like, uh, it's, it's, uh, so it's so, but once again, so like the, the scav thing, you know, and, and their AI is a part of the conversation because then you're, then it's like, oh, if the AI was better and we had these one taps, then would, would the armor feel better? Because it's like, so it's like, it's hard to have the conversation because so many things kind of converge. You make an armor change and then everyone's, you know, starts getting one tapped more. It feels like it's super easy to say it's the armor, but, but I think it's a lot of things. And so it's hard to, and then the cherry on top is the information that was already, how much of the information was withheld from the players, uh, is just more withheld. Like if we could kind of see through and make it out, you know, I, I, I told Aaron, I was, I want to show you a clip, Toby Two-Faced, he's a. I think that's his name. I'm sorry if I got it wrong. Toby, for sure. He's good. I saw his clips. I see his clips a lot on TikTok. Dude's nasty. He killed me the other day on streets. I saw a clip of him. He was farming Kolontai, new boss for the quest. Zabralo. Toby had a Zabralo, full durability, which has neck protection, by the way. It's class mm -hmm. three, but it's neck protection. Uh, he has an Alton, fresh, fresh Alton, fresh Alton visor. Um... Peaks a corner, colon tie guard, only one on his screen. This it wasn't like there was a guy that got him to the left. Only one on his screen. He was facing him. So he goes bop bop. Boom. Falls over dead. After action report says he died to back upper chest. And uh, it was to 545 BP. 545 BP is was buffed now. So like 545 BP is actually juice ammo. But he was just like. What the hell? And I was talking to Airwing. He was like, could have been fragmentation. Like if 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 the, it hit and then it fragment and then the fragment has killed him. The fragment hits him in the back. It says back, and it's like, okay, sure. Like I'm not saying, I'm not saying that that, uh, I'm not saying it's unexplainable that that happens. I'm saying, what the hell is the average player supposed to do with that information, right? Like, yeah, the guy was in front of me and I got shot in the back and died. So that's another cherry on top where like as things are getting more confusing as far as like what it feels, it's also getting more confusing as what we are being told happened. <laughs> like this whole thing is such a different conversation. If the after action report just provided a detailed breakdown, you know what I mean? Like this shot fragmented, this shot's fragment hits you in these places. This was the kill because then we can have a, a conversation about like fra it fragments too much and fragments too little fragmentation should be removed from the game. But it's like, we're just kind of assuming that the round with God knows what fragmentation chance hits a fresh Zabralo with an 11% chance to pen pens and fragments. And that secondary damage hits him in the upper thorax and kills him. We're assuming, but that's all we can really do. And testing should be done, whatever. But I'm just saying to the average player, that's just a feels bad. You know what I mean? Now, now, I have to say, like, the first thing that comes to mind is I think, P like, BSG has, like, a love-hate relationship with folks like Airwing and folks like myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, like, appreciate the feedback. 
but kind of wish we would all fuck off. I'm sure to some extent. Because they yeah. don't want, like, here's the thing. When we're like, we want information, we want to know if things are working, blah, blah, BSG's like, I don't want you to know. You should. You don't have to know. Yeah. You fucking play the game and you experience it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, which kind of sucks, but like, it, it's, it's not unintentional that they never fucking tell us anything. Are you talking about like the like a detailed after damage report, or you're just saying like acknowledging yeah, yeah, like, weather it, fragmentation? Everything, everything in general. If they give you a detailed after action report, yeah, what they're doing is is explicitly saying what some of the mechanics are. Yes, yes, and and. The more information they give us, the, the more we can figure out about how their systems yes, work and you're right. understand if they're broken. And they don't want you're that. You're right. But my argument there is at that point, no information is better. Because like Toby Two-Face rounds the corner, a colon tie guard shoots him, he falls over dead, he goes, damn, the AI sucks. It's more frustrating to have that happen and the game say, you got shot in the back, nerd. Does that make sense? So I so to your point, I actually agree. I can act I see that as a reality so much where like the more information they give the player, the the more we can suss out broken mechanics and then the community gets mad about this when they were trying to fix that and they feel like they have to shift priorities or whatever. But at that point, the the half measure is is more frustrating. You know what I mean? For sure. For sure. So, so, and, and once again, I'm not saying that any of these things are an easy fix. I'm saying when we talk about armor, there's so much to it. There's like the, per there's what's really happening. And then there's the perception of what's happening. And then in between what's really happening and my perception of what's happening, there's what the game is telling me what's happening, which isn't an accurate description of what I felt, nor is it an accurate description of what actually happened. So it introduces a third narrative and it's just awful <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah man so i so i don't know it's been it's a weird it's just been weird um there are times i love this system earlier earlier today i got lit up my my plates weren't too bad but i just did it for like the cool factor of it i threw my armor on the ground and i swapped my front and my back plate because i got shot in the front so my front plate was like 40 out of 50 durability but my back plate mm -hmm. was 50 out of 50 and i swapped them and i felt cool <coughs> doing that i was like this is sick i like this you know what i mean but then I've gotten one tap by scavs 18 times in the past 48 hours and it makes me sad. You know what I mean? And, and so it's like, and then, and then there's the like, and then I've been thinking a lot as well about like the, uh, um, I want to say the ends justify the means. That's not the right. I've been thinking a lot about like to a lot of people that watch my stream, they see that I have 50 million rubles and it's, there's this, um, what does it matter? You're winning. Yeah. And, and that I'm seeing that mentality bubble up more and that, uh, hurts my heart because like it's a unrealistic to assume that the average player could make 50 million rubles in a month, right? I, I play this game. Like when people ask me how I make so much money, my new answer is like, I play this game an unhealthy amount. Like, please don't compare yourself to me. I'm 7,000 hours. I play 40 to 50 hours a week. Like that's how, right? But well, well that, that also, you have me now wondering, well then what's the real answer? Cause playing a lot. Oh, well, yeah, it's, I play when, with, when people, when people are losing a hundred thousand rubles per hour, yeah. playing more, doesn't make more money. Yeah. It makes less money. Well, so. I say th I say that, but then I say the biggest ways are I play with friends, and that um, insulates me from so much. Uh, you get insurance. It removes enemies and adds. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's it's me. Every and, time I think about it, it blows my mind how exponential it exponential. is. Right? If there's if there's ten people in a raid and you're solo, you have nine enemies, and yeah. at any given time, you are the only person on the other side of an engagement. Yeah. If you are in a three man squad, yep. instead of nine enemies, there's seven. Yeah. And now when you're fighting someone, you have a 33% chance to be the one that dies yep. first. So it's like, yep. there's just so many. And if you do die, there's a good chance. They're going to be able to insurance fraud your shit. 100%. People, people ask how I make money. 
the reason I have so much money is 50% because of how I make money and 50% because of how I don't have to spend money. And yeah. that's where the teammates come in. Me and uh, Velian and Gino played labs today for five hours. As far as I remember, not a single time did we get team wiped. That's a completely different labs experience. Every raid, one of us dies. The other two bring out their gear. And in the event that two of us die, the one that lives at least brings out guns and mags. And that's what, 300, 400,000 rubles easy? 100%. So it's like that insulates you from spending <laughs> so much money. This is such a first world problem. But for the past week, I've been trying to work through my insurance and I can't do it fast enough because I get more back. If I go on a seven raid survive streak, well, then I have all like I, I can't I just can't go through it because I have teammates. Right. So there's that. So it's like I always say, A, I play too much. B, I play with teammates and C, my computer can run streets. And so like that's pretty much the like infinite money glitch. If you have a squad and can run streets and can play the game 40 hours a week, you're going to be rich too. Um, so it's like, uh, what was I going to? Oh, oh, oh. But this is where we this is where we are. This is where we went though. The, like I would give up 50 million rubles for like a better in raid experience. Does that make sense? Like the the yeah. that thought process of like it doesn't matter how many times you get one tapped by scavs. It doesn't matter if the boss AI sucks. It doesn't matter if you can understand what happened to your armor. As long as number go up, bro, you're winning. And to me, that's like, I completely reject that. But if I say that, I say it from a place of having 50 million rubles. So the, so the people are like, well, you only say that because you're rich. But it's like, I'd much rather an experience where, you know, that felt intuitive and fun and, and less frustrating and more understandable, which whatever. So it's just, it's just been interesting, man. It has just been very, very interesting. Before we move on, I want to take a quick second and thank the sponsor for this episode, and that is Factor. Factor's ready-to-eat meal kits can help you get started on your resolutions this year. Uh, I actually really enjoy using this. I'm at my desk all day long, and I never want to get up from my stream and go actually like make food, prepare something. So it being ready to eat, I can get a chef prepared, a dietitian approved meal ready to eat in two minutes or less is awesome. A huge like benefit. And one of the things that I love about them is the convenience factor. The fact that you can choose what type of food you want to eat. They have like protein plus or keto. So you can cater it to whatever your needs or what your goals are for this year. Additionally, the convenience and flexibility of being able to choose how many meals I want. If I want to pause the subscription, if I want to take a week off, if I want to increase the amount of meals I want this week or change whatever is awesome. I love being able to be in control of that. Each week they have over 55 additional add-ons you can choose from like smoothies, breakfast items, snacks, or anything like that. And uh, it's really nice because for me, it is really easy to fall into the trap of just ordering out or getting food delivered every single day. And that can get unbelievably expensive very quickly. So you know what you're getting yourself into with Factor. You're in control of everything and it is awesome. So you can head to factormeals.com slash podcast 50 and use code podcast 50 for 50% 50 off. That is code podcast 50 at factormeals.com slash podcast 50 to get 50% off. So thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring this episode. So that, I mean, that was a long little diatribe on the armor. There's there's a few things that that have just been happening that are like we can we can blow through pretty quickly. Um, a lot of them are our conversations we've had a lot before, so we don't have to go too in, in, in depth on them. But boy, oh boy, dude, the spawns right now. It's so brutal, dude. Did you see the clip I posted to Twitter? Yeah, I think I, I responded to it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I and, and I basically said I, I, when I saw the clip, I was like, thank God you weren't the one that died. Because even though your complaint would have been the same. Yeah. The perception would have been that I was whining about dying. Like, you're whining about dying. You're whining about dying. It's your fault. As opposed to, it's just so much easier to yeah. to like make a point when you're not like the victim you're like, of the you point. Feel bad when exactly when you're yeah. the one who like had the advantageous side of the situation. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, thank God. Yeah, 
And then and then you even put in your tweet, there were people in the replies saying that was honestly a skill issue that that guy died. He shouldn't have, you know, he shouldn't have stood there, you know, and it's just like it blew, it blows my mind because once again, it feels to me kind of like the Stockholm syndrome where it's a perceived skill ceiling, like where people see it as like a you're good at the game because, you know, the spawns and X, Y, Z and and whatever. And to me, it's like, it's the it's the opposite. It's like it's a skill ceiling because of a bad game design, not an intended one. So we've talked about that before. I don't I know. I tell my wife every time we have this light switch and it fucking haven't uh, haven't fixed the electrics on it. So like every other time you flip it, it shocks the hell out of you. And every time she gets hit with it, I'm like skill issue. Yeah. Like you just got to know. You have to know to... when you have to know the odds. You have to learn. You know, it's just like. Yeah. And that's a lie based on a video game where the, you literally flip the switch and it shocks you. I, I don't. Abuse my wife with light switch. <laughs> um, but it's 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 been super brutal. Shoreline is is really bad. They removed the spawn, the old god spawn, the one that's like where you would rush right into the east wing. They removed that spawn because uh there's the new area out there. So mm -hmm. there's the same amount of players on shoreline, one less spawn that a whole squad can spawn. So everybody, and it was the one spawn that they got rid of was the one of the isolated spawns. If you got that spawn, you weren't going to shoot anybody in 30 seconds. And that was the spawn they got rid of on Shoreline. And so all the other spawns are getting populated more often, which are all the spawns where you can just like spawn and look to the left and kill somebody. And so just... It's, oh my God, it's such a solvable problem. That's what I think as well. Like I know people... You should know it is. Yeah. Because it is. Yeah. Like, and like, and, and, and here, here's here's the thing. If you start to think about how you would solve this problem, it's one of those things where, like, as an engineer, you have to you have to look at things from a particular perspective. There's like the elegant, the elegant solution, which is, okay, you have a picture a map, picture a million little circles yeah. everywhere on a map where there could possibly be X fills. What you need to do is figure out like an algorithm that could, for any number of people perfectly distribute the people in such a way that there was never anyone like an adjacent yeah. circles kind of thing right um so then you try to come up with all of the, the, this you know implementation or you take a step back and you go wait this is a finite problem i don't need to come up with an elegant solution that's possibly complicated but solves all the situations I would potentially advocate for brute forcing it. If you, if there's, if on reserve, let's say there's yeah. 12 PMCs, there's literally only, I don't know how many possibilities, but we can like roughly count yeah. them out. There's 12 solos. Yeah. In that case, boom, these are the fucking spawns. Oh, there could be one or two. I see like what you you're have, doing. Yeah. You manually put one here. You manually put one here. You manually, right? You, you could make it in such a way that it's like, okay, this is situation A. 12 solos situation B is a duo and 10 solos situate. And like, literally that's how I would do it. If I was BSG. Yeah. Y you end up with like, okay, then you have a three man, a three man, a three man, a four man, a three man, a three man, a four man and three solos. Yeah. They're like, literally that's how I would do it. It would take an afternoon to go through all of the redundant bullshit. And it's not an elegant solution, but what it is, is it's a hard coded specifically designed solution yeah. that like, in every case, you could look at and say, none of these are problematic. Yeah. Rather than come up with some generic thing that's like, if there's an adjacent node that doesn't have anything, <laughs> then move over yeah. to adjacent nodes. And then it's kind of like a black box that you sort of hope works. And then yeah. you end up with what we have now. Yeah, for sure. And it's like fixed, fixed spawns. Like you said, like a brute force thing where it was like, if there were 12 solos, I would know where all of those 12 solos spawned. Knowing that information doesn't matter if I can't get to that person in 30 seconds. Because in exactly. the because in the first 30 seconds of a raid, any number of decisions could be made about where each person is gonna rotate. And something something that starts more binary and more predictable ends up in a much more unpredictable experience for the players. Where what we have is, well, I don't know if somebody spawns there. It's kind of random, man. But but it means if I look to my right and don't see someone, all I have to do is look to my left and then it's going to be there. And it ends up with a much more binary solution on maps like Reserve or Shoreline right now or uh, Interchange where you just get into that spawn fight predictably and that's super annoying. 
Uh, so and, yeah, and the way and the way that I would tackle the problem too is here's a here's a rule. I come up with a hard and fast rule between any two adjacent spawns. Yeah, you should not be able to get line of sight on that area within yeah. X seconds of the start of a raid. And if you can, it, you need to move it. And if you literally move them to the point where there's not enough space, then reduce the number of PMCs. Yeah, 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 yeah. If it's like you're trying to fit 10 and you can't, like the last one is like overlap, like the, the circles are overlapping. I, I You should picture it like a dot where you spawn and then yeah. there's a radius where it's like... Nobody should and, be and here. You can, and you can work with three dimensions. Yes. On reserve, if you're three feet under, you know, 30 feet underground and someone's right on top, those spawns are fine to be overlapping because yeah. they're not overlapping. You'd have to run up 17 sets of stairs yeah. and turn left and then go down a hallway to see the guy. So if the rule is you can't see someone or, you know, or, and again, there may be three or four rules. You shouldn't be able to throw a grenade within 30 seconds yeah. and, and intersect like a circle yeah. of a person. Yeah. If they just did that, they would have it solved. For sure. And, and, and the thing, like the thing I always come back to, I've said it on the podcast before that proves to me that there is something wrong with their current spawn logic because when you when you scale up to the bigger maps it's a little bit harder than people start being like well people should spawn in the center of the maps and then people are like well then be close to loot or those would be bad spawns yada yada i just go back to factory i'm like if if bsg's spawn logic was anywhere remotely smart like they expanded factory there's an underground and if you look at the map there's technically like 14 available spawns why is it in 70% of my raids, me and my duo spawn in forklift, there's a duo in front of us down glass hole, and there's a duo to the left of us? Why are 90 to 100% of the PMCs spawning in a 10 meter radius of each other when there are 15 spawns? If the spawn, like, if the spawn logic is exists at all, that shouldn't happen. Factory is the literal... Factory is is T wall for spawns. It, it, there's mm -hmm. only six PMCs and there's 18 spawns. It's T ball. And if you, you should and if never you, see somebody in 10 seconds. Like it's crazy. If you spawn forklift, you look down glass hallway. There's no one there. You go left and go down the back hallway and there's no one there. What do you know already? Oh yeah, it's like a four man on the other side of the it's map. It's a four man in the corner. <laughs> yeah. That's literally. And it was so funny because the, the moment that happened yesterday, uneventful was like. You know that there's like a form like, yep, that's exactly what yeah, I was thinking. 100%. And, and and all of a sudden I hear fucking three guns all shooting at some scabs or whatever. Yeah. And I roll up and I fucking kill one guy, throw an aid on the other dude. The other guy died to a scab and it's like, well, there's the lobby. Exactly. They were all just buddies. So factory, and I'm not saying factory, factory should be a small map. You should get into PVP much faster. It shouldn't be 30 seconds, but, but I'm saying the spawns. That's T-Ball. That's, that's, the spawn logic on Factory is easy mode. There are so few PMCs, and with the Factory expansion, the map is big enough. You shouldn't be spawning in eye shot of other PMCs, but we do Glass all hallway the time. should be deleted. Yeah, 100%. Glass hallway is an example of you are pinned because you can have somebody out the hallway yeah. to the right, and you can have someone down the hallway. That is like a delete that spawn. Yeah. And you've improved the spawns. Yeah. Because now you can't be... Exactly. That, that's an, and that's another one of the requirements that should be on the list, which is you should have more than than two directions where you can go where yes. you're not funneled into it. It shouldn't yeah. be at the end of a hallway with one doorway that has one hallway to one doorway. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like When you're trying to get your office kills and you spawn forklifts... <laughs> That's so frustrating because you only have two ways to go. You go down glass hole, you go to your left, there's spawns on either side. You need to kill people in the freaking office. You know what I mean? And you're just like, what am I going to do? You're stuck. You go out the door in front of you. Yeah, and, and hope then... to Christ you don't die to a scab. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it just like, it. yeah, the, the spawns have been bad and it, it just feels like, it. you know, it's another part of the game where because of this bad game design which is like the way they design their spawns the player base is then introduced with frustrations that only exist when the game is at its healthiest which is when there are the most players when there are mm -hmm. the most players playing the game the lobbies are full and in any other game when there are the most players playing the game the game is healthy that's the best time but you experience some of the most frustrating and most time-wasting thing when you're a new player, when you only play when there are a million people playing, when you play at a wipe, right? 
and you gear up for five minutes, you wait for your buddies for three minutes, you match for five minutes, and you spawn, and in 30 seconds, your whole squad is wiped to a guy that's level 40 already and just knows the spawns better than you, you quit playing. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, that's, that's a really bad sign that aspects of the game are way more fun when there are less people playing it. That's not good for the long-term health of that video game, right? We see the same thing with the player scab problem, which is another thing that I wanted to talk about on here, which is that like when there's a when there's 500,000 people playing after a wipe, everyone's trying to player scav because it's, you know, a free kit. And then the two complaints pop up all the time. What are they? Scav queue times are too long. And I keep running into goddamn player scavs four minutes into my raids. And it's mm -hmm. like, this is not good. Th that, like, these things happen when the player base is at its healthiest. You, the game doesn't know what the hell to do with player scavs because everyone wants to play Streets or Lighthouse. So it shoves them in 60 seconds. It feels it's really four minutes, but 60 seconds after a raid starts. And. Well, four minutes might as well be right after a raid starts because what happens? You spawn. If you, you happen to survive fight. the initial fight and then you spend the rest of the time healing all of your limbs, 100%. reloading your magazines, and then, oh. And there are scavs that have vaulted into the march room and you're trying to go there for a quest and you die to them inside. And it's like, what? Makes you feel like those happening? are the guys you just killed that yeah. scabbed into the same. Remember how I said that? I'm like, it yes. felt like the dudes that rolled up to me on interchange. It felt like they were the same dudes I just yeah. killed because it was a three man and then a three man of player scavs. Yeah. So the, the player scav thing has been rough. And once again, you, uh, because of the armor changes, player, like me as a player scav, I feel more powerful. You know what I mean? I spawned, dude, I, I actually had this the other day. I, uh, I clipped it and cause I was going to, I was going to like tweet it if I felt like choosing violence. I spawned into a streets raid solo, but I spawned into a streets raid as a player scav, uh, 45 minutes left in the raid. So the raid was four minutes old. With an SKS and 60 rounds of BP. Uh, BP is unobtainium as my PMC. My level four, my level uh, 46 PMC, BP is unobtainium, right? I get 60 rounds and an SKS, which shoots super flat, super easy now. I got headphones <laughs> and it's Augustine. I'd be running for the X, Phil. <laughs> Let's go. What a... It was free. I go run at a PMC. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Four minutes in, dude. I'm getting to the loot first with better gear than these PMCs. Like, in what universe is that like the intended experience? You know, I don't know. I don't know. So it's like my with my solution to that has always been simple as well. And I and it's this is the closest thing I have to like a real true hot take because every time I bring it up, I brought this up earlier in chat and somebody literally typed in, I would stop playing the game if that happened altogether. And it was just uh scat player scap shouldn't be able to choose where you go. It solves both of those problems. Yeah. I, I agree. Because it shares the load between like the the reason you've never seen a clip of a guy dying to a player scap four minutes into a raid on customs woods um like what other maps uh shoreline is because nobody scavs those maps if you have 100,000 people scaving at any given time 59,000 of them are scaving streets 40,000 of them are scaving lighthouse and the other thousand are scaving reserve and there are eight people scaving woods and customs and shoreline and a bunch of people scav factory but but it's like so the reason your scavs take so long to queue in and the reason you run into so many player scavs is because everyone wants to play that map. If people aren't allowed to choose where they go, you um, you distribute the load equally. And because the load is so much less, their logic can be such that, which it is, by the way, at the end of a wipe, most <clears throat> of the time I'm scaving in uh, 15 minutes into a raid. And that's because less people are scaving. So there is some logic where when the load is low, spawn them in later. But when the load gets high, they abandon that, right? So if we distribute the load mm. equally among the maps, the load gets lessened. Pe scavs start spawning later in the raids. And I get it. And I, dude, I get it. I get so, people get no. so mad at that, but it's still free. It's still a free kit, man. 
It's still a free kit. You can make mad money on any map. I swear to God, you can get make make mad money on any map. I don't think I did a single scav raid this entire white because on day two when I started to play, I just sat for thirty minutes in a, yeah. like in a factory scav queue. Like I I never scav. I would honestly the idea of scaving lighthouse is like the last thing I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I, I yeah because. Oh, I don't know. It, it, I just like feel like I never have uh, a good time. What it, when it, what ends up happening is like I run around and do like a bunch of boring looting because I like the combat. Mm -hmm. Have some jank ass gear, do a bunch of looting. If I find something good, that's somehow when I come across like the juiced up guy who, who with like the Valde, I never had yeah. a chance. Um, but yeah. And then now I just see like a, I just see my like, Vityaz scav with like no armor or whatever yeah. and I'm just like I'm just gonna PMC like I don't I don't know that I want to scav I feel that I don't know it's, but, it's um, once again it's the that's another thing where I scav so much as a result of me playing with other people like if like if we get into that spawn fight and I die and Velian lives it's like I know he's not gonna worry about bringing my gear because the raid just started but even if he yeah, just yeah. wants to book it to the extract it's gonna take him 10 minutes because he has to play <laughs> smart so I hop into a scav real quick I spawn him with 60 rounds of BP on streets. I go kill two PMCs. And then it's like, I'm way up. He ditched yeah, my yeah, gear. Yeah. So I'm getting that back. And I'm way up. I found a Bitcoin and I killed a PMC. It's like, let's go. So it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's interesting. Uh, a few other a few other interesting things happened. Um, uh, so this is like an interesting one. The, a clip started going around of Glorious saying that... Um, that oh, he got told to... that he was told to stop dropping Zabralos for people. He was doing the barter. So, so it good. We've talked about, um, uh, uh, so it good is scuffed because, um, you can't get the Zabralos. The only way to get it or like to do, you have to be level 50. You have to complete the quest long line. So you can complete the last booze so you can get the Zabralo barter or the other one is like, go way down the light keeper line. So it's just like, and so it good, by the way, is not just a random quest. So it good locks, so it good part three locks, so it good part four and living high is not a crime part one and living high is not a crime part two, which you have to collect a bunch of items for. So, so many people are like, I have everything for living high is not a crime part one and part two. And I have everything for so it good part four. And it's all just sitting in my stash. You know what I mean? So anyways, so the clip's going around of him saying, now, once again, I, I think Glorious is a great, I believe him, but there's obviously a chance that he made that up. I don't think that's true, but he was told to stop doing that, which is just crazy because there's a lot of implications there. It's like, where's the line? You know what I mean? Like, it, if I, like, b because people started asking me, I literally, I brought in Vel's gear and somebody legitimately was like, oh, can't you get banned for that? And I was like, N no, but I get it because they're like, my answer is no, I'd have to do it a lot. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a good answer to that question. Like, you, I, I don't know. It's weird. And I, I don't No, Sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I, uh, the only other thing is, is, and then we, we have some really interesting other developments too in that like okay so what i've been what i've been trying to piecemeal together recently is areas of the game where what the game asks you to do is in direct con uh conflict with another thing the game asks you to do um and and like just some of those things kill scavs don't kill scavs <laughs> yeah but or or okay you remember the rusty bloody key you remember we talked about this last wipe they added this key mid wipe it spawns in and it's the key that you can only find in raid and it can't fit in your secure container. And it's a room on streets where when you unlock it, there's like keys everywhere. And there was like, there was a bunch of keys and like bitcoins and some rare value spawns. And I was talking about how like, uh, it was such a, it was a really cool experience for me. Like the game actually teed me up for a really cool thing. Cause I found the key and I was super stressing because if you die the key, you like, Oh, anyways, and the whole thing is when you, there's a quest called the door. If you find this key, you go unlock the room and you plant a few Wi-Fi cameras in there. And it's like, it's like a goaded marked room. It's like four marked rooms. There's legitimately, there, there was like 14 key spawns. It was keys, primarily keys. So sometimes yeah, you would yeah, find yeah, yeah. like, you know, 
marked key. Sometimes you would find two, three or four marked keys in there, various marked keys. Sometimes you'd find, you know, customs, dorms keys, whatever. And the reward for completing that quest was you would get one of those keys as a reward. So you had okay. to find one, then you go to the room, you plant the Wi-Fi cameras, you loot it up, and then as a quest reward, you get one, and you can, you know, either help somebody else do it or go in and get that juice loot again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As of this wipe, they've removed every single piece of loot out of that room. So now, it's a very rare key spawn that spawns in very rarely. And if you get it and you have the quest, you go in there and you plant your Wi-Fi cameras. And as a reward, you get another key. But there's nothing in there. There's nothing in there now. There's not even a duffel bag, dude. There's nothing in there. And so I've had people say, well, it's so you can help your friends do it. And I'm like, but people are getting trouble for helping their friends with Zabralos when they, does that make sense? It's like, Yo, yeah, I mean, what's it's, well, happening with the game where somebody, this has, this is bad quest design and somebody's getting in trouble for helping other people complete the quest. And this bad quest design is like, well, yeah, you get the extra key to help out other people. And I'm like, what's, what are we doing? What's happening? <laughs> I don't know. So there, there's multiple pieces of this that come to mind. First of all, um, that I don't know if we know and maybe like, I don't know if people fucking data mine the loot tables or something like that. But like, if we know some alternative hypotheses. Yeah. Loot vacuum cheater. Yes. BSG trying to nerf loot vacuum cheaters, hoping that maybe if they turn off all the good loot everywhere, then all the cheaters will fuck off and then they can yeah. turn them back on or like something like that. Or trying to com combat RMT in some other way other than the loot vacuum cheaters. But like, it's the same, like, why is marked room and customs? I don't know. Maybe it's good now, but for uh, two years, it was fucking trash. Yeah. Garbage after it was the best room in the game. But that's the um, thing. So I thought about all those, those two things and it's all anecdotal. You're totally right that there could be some mixture of things here. Uh, I've seen all over Twitter that nobody like has, nobody's finding anything in it. Like mm -hmm. uh, other streamers, other people. Uh, when I looted it and I was like, what's going on? And other people in chat were like, yeah, there was nothing in there when I did it. So the more people that report that to me or the more I see that, the less likely it is that every one of those instances was like a vacuum cheater. Because I thought yeah, that yeah. too. I was like, could be a vacuum cheater, but I was like that. And then, <laughs> okay, so and then other people said the same thing. It was like, well, they nerfed the room because of the vacuum cheats or because of other cheats. And I'm like, that's very plausible. I found seven Bitcoin today on streets. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like so it makes where there's loot literally everywhere on this map. So then addressing the other part of it, it, it I don't know why, but it just seems completely like as close to a 0% chance as possible that the reason why BSG wanted to give you a key was to help out a Correct. friend. I agree. There's no chance. I right? agree. So, so I understand you're pointing out that the people proposing that aren't thinking yeah. about the con inconsistency of whatever. But also, I don't think that the glorious situation, people are interpreting it in the weirdest way, it seems like to me. Here's what happened. Yeah. It's another instance where yeah. a streamer is doing thing that normal player cannot do, and they have big audience. Yeah. BSG get upset about streamer do thing. Because people are upset about them doing yeah. a thing because either they just don't like streamers yeah. or they're jealous that they can't do whatever it is, that they're not able to get viewer kits or to give yeah. quest items or to get quest items or whatever. Yeah. Um, and BSG, here's a bunch of people whining about streamers doing things that they shouldn't. And also, they take it personally that someone's getting around I want you to have challenge. You have challenge. Yeah. If you get around it, that frustrates me. Yeah. So they go and talk to the one guy who is a streamer who uh, 
it doesn't affect anyone. It's literally irrelevant. Yeah. And they go, hey, don't do that anymore. And then everybody extrapolates yeah. that. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. If I drop a Salewa yes. to my friend, I'm going to get banned. Yeah. I'm going to get banned. It's nonsense. And so what happens is then Pestily makes a video and Pestily's video is BSG. You can't make these rules. Yeah. And not officially communicate them, blah, blah, blah. And like, I get where he's coming from, but I also felt like it was kind of a, like it missed the mark in terms of seeing the forest for the trees in that this wasn't BSG trying to communicate some widespread rule. It was Correct. BSG yeah. sending a private message to someone asking them to stop, not expecting them to say it in front of their yeah. audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's almost definitely what happened. For sure. And then when that happens and they're like, fuck, we don't want you fucking sharing DMs or whatever. Yeah. Then now they have to double down because they can't have special treatment for, for streamers sure. for sure so they have to it's so it's this fucking whole contrived thing where now you have people saying oh it's intentional game design because of some Correct. convoluted and, and yeah in 11 different like versions of the story spread like wildfire overnight but like i guess the point i was making yeah and and that's it's good that you said that cuz the point i was making was not that you should be worried that you're going to get banned for dropping gear for your friend. And it also wasn't that I genuinely think the the reason BSG gives you a, or the reason the game gives you a key when you complete that quest is to share it with your friends. The point I'm trying to make is like all of this confusion is just so like avoidable. Like, like it, the, how, how it's hard, not. how hard, how hard is it to just change? So it good. Oh well, okay. So instead that, of that, instead of DMing Glorious, I'm not saying they should. I'm not saying that Glorious solve, should have read the DM. But that doesn't solve the viewer kit situation or any of the other stuff around no, dropping stuff for anyone. But it, it helps not make it worse. One agreed. No, no, agreed. Yeah. But I mean, that's what I don't know if you saw my tweet um, about the quests yesterday or the day before. Um, Let's see. I said half the community is molding that you should be able to drop quest items for friends because it's a team game. Yes. The other half is arguing no because it promotes RMT. And I've been out here for years saying better quest design from BSG would avoid these issues entirely. Yeah. And, and then I proposed like, um, and, and then in another tweet that's like a fucking super long, yeah, like nine paragraph tweet. I explain how the bad game design. Yeah. Uh, the the bad quest design. Um, they're all reactionary, one dimensional solutions to problems that they created themselves because they build features that like sound cool. Like, oh, okay, we want to make them. We want to make them go get an armor that is damaged in such and such a situation. That's what we want to do. They don't say we want people to learn how to build guns or to learn how to modify armor or they they. they they start with like a a very specific action yeah. as opposed to an idea and a principle around we want them to explore. Yeah. We want them to be challenged in this way or we want them to learn this feature or this mechanic. They yeah. say, they say, okay, we have gun modification. How can we force them to use gun modification? Yeah. Oh, well, we make them build guns. Okay, how do we do that in a way that's challenging? Make them build one specific gun. Okay, cool. Well, everybody just buys all the parts on the flea market. Fuck, we need to make it really challenging. Make one of them super, super, super rare. Okay, well then, now it's frustratingly annoying. And then they go, okay, then make a barter for the thing. So now Gunsmith is is buy a thing and look for two Tashanka and equals MP5, which equals XP and money. That's and all. because that was happening too fast, now... 11 of the gunsmiths have a 24 hour timer before you can get the next one to slow you down, it, which, which is, and I quote one dimensional solutions to problems that are reactionary that they created themselves because they built feature like, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I, I agree with you. And, and it's funny cause I forgot you tweeted that, but I, that's the best way to sum up the, the whole point I was trying to make about everything about. So it good about the rusty bloody key is, is just like, it just like it, it where the game is, the quests are everything. 
there's no real like deep emergent gameplay. So like the quests are the progression and it's everything. And it's just like, it's crumbling. It's all crumbling to the ground. The door was one of the quests I praised them on the most. They added it last wipe. I had some feedback on, I wish you could put the key in your secure container because of how rare it is. Cause you can't sell it on the flea. I was like, man, I wish you could be, you know, whatever. But I was like, this is such a fantastic quest. It's a locked key. There's tons of loot in there. It's not abusable because it doesn't spawn. There's a quest in there. And they just, va they, they vacuum cheated the loot out of there like themselves. They just took it out. And then so it good, which was a quest line that, yeah, maybe had some problems. Maybe it was hard to find the other Zabralo, but it was fine. They made the armor changes that made the quest impossible. And instead of fixing the quest or changing it, they added like a weird solution where you can turn in a hundred percent Zabralo as a fit as a 50% Zabralo, but nobody can get Zabralo. So it's not really fixing the problem. And so it's like, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's like the quests are everything right now. And they're not, they're just not fulfilling. They're not good. They're not intuitive. It's, it's like, woof. Now, now I, I'd be interested because there are some times where people are like, I love X quest. And I'm like, that's a, an example of bad quest design. Yeah. And, or, and I'm like, I like this quest. And they're like, I would fucking hate that. Yeah, that's, that's just another example of quests. this. Yeah. And it's like, um, so the quest that I, one of the, uh, I finished all of the quests except for the wine bottle one on, oh, ground, on zero. ground Zero. And I was just reminded of, I had the the experience. Uh, basically, there's like the golden pocket watch on Ground Zero now, which yes. is you go and you to to the Terra Group area, you find the dead PMCs, you go find the dead scientist who has a key on yep. him, and then the alternative, which is almost definitely unintentional, but I wish they would build it in and make it slightly more feasible, but. If you if you go there and the key has been looted already, yeah, you can jump through the window, go out on the balcony into the next room. Okay, which is like I kind of like that because it's like okay, there's RNG doesn't dictate success or not. Yeah, it dictates whether you do the risky strat. Yeah, because you're out on the balcony on the second floor. If you fuck up your vault, like that sucks. But like you're a sitting duck, yeah. So you have to like break the window because you don't want to shoot and make people look i actually so it rather than make it so that like you have to panic vault and hopefully not die yeah they should put like a little ramp there and like some bloody footprints yeah or something yeah yeah, like, yeah and then put in the quest but like i don't know about anybody else i liked that quest because there was tons of environmental storytelling yes i had to use the map to figure out the terra group area i yeah i maybe i got lucky but I just like accidentally sort of stumbled across the places that I need to go while I was exploring, yeah. which is like, there's really only so many places you can go. Yeah. So as long as you keep poking around in the one building that only really has like two ways in, yeah, you'll find it. I don't know. I really liked that quest. Yeah, I agree. Well, yeah, that's, um, that is, by the way, that reminded me when you're talking about this, the quests and like the, that's such a good way that you put it. Um, RNG not determining the success or failure of the quest, but determining how risky you want to be. Like, I got good RNG, I got a good spawner, I got a good thing, or nobody's here, I might want to take a risk, but that's not going to determine whether I, you know, have to play eight more raids to find this random stim or whatever. And the reason that that reminded me is we were, um, we were playing labs earlier, and the reason we were playing labs is because uh, both um, Gino and I needed three BTGs and AHF ones for samples and for colleagues part three. And so Valiant had black key card, you know, so we're just basically farming the stems. I needed a three BTG. Uh, Gino needed a AHF one. We go into black, find a three BTG, find an AHF one. This is like 10th raid, right? We've been grinding labs. Valiant dies. I kill the guy that kills Valiant. Uh, or no, no, no. Somebody shoots at us. I kill a PMC. Then we go down underground and he's like, let's just get out. We have your stims. Velian then dies to a dude that was camping down there by the extract. And me and Gino, like, like I throw a grenade down the thing and I jump out and we get out of the raid. And we had been in the raid for six minutes and six seconds. Oh, no. So we so got a run through. Run. I killed a PMC and I got a run through. And I... 
six minutes, I had felt a, a run through didn't even cross my mind. Like I truly felt that we were in the raid long enough. Like it wasn't like spawn. Oh my God, the stim. I got to get out of here. Like, like the guide and the guide. You're like just sitting there at the extract. You're like, okay, like six minutes is a long time. But when we ran across the map from our spawn, we got into black room. We looted all the stims. We were like, oh, I found the HF1. I gave it to this guy. PMC pushes us. I kill the PMC. We rotate away. We rotate down. Vel dies. Like, I thought we were fine. And so we spent a, we spent a good amount of time talking about that, where it was like the, the RNG nature of that quest stands in opposition of the, the found and raid system and the run through system. Because like, I could play 50 labs raids and not find the three BTG the night he did. I found it. I got the RNG. I have mm -hmm. it. And in every conceivable way, I engaged with that raid. I PVP'd. I got out. I extracted. I did. Which the is the thing. point of the game. It's not combat. It's survival, yeah. which is what Nikita said. I did the thing and I couldn't turn in the stim. And we were talking about like other solutions. We were talking about like, so, you know, uh, like, you know, there should be like a third mark, you know, found in raid is the thing, not found in raid is the thing. And there should be a third one that's like quest item. And even if you die with that item on you, you can still turn it in for a quest. But because it's not marked with the found in raid, it can't be listed on the flea. So it's not abusable where as long as you have the quest, you can just keep listing things on the flea. And then somebody was like, and then the pocket watch. Well, I know. But I'll get there. But then somebody was like, well, no, the whole point of the game is the uh, the um, the threat, like the the need for survival. Like, you know what I mean? And I was like, I was like, yeah, but not but not. But that's what I was saying. I was saying in a vacuum, I was like, th this is the problem with a lot of these conversations is we're talking about it in a vacuum in a vacuum. Yes, it, it would feel a little like, because my suggestion was I should be able to turn this quest item in even though I died with it or even though it's not, you know, found in raid. And and uh, and his, that was my suggestion at the, in the moment. I was just like, man, this is stupid. I wish I could do this. And and his thing was like, well, the game is about like survival and getting out. And I feel like it would cheapen the experience if you couldn't get that. And I was like, actually, you're right. But the problem is we're talking about this in a vacuum. If this quest was like the pocket watch and I knew it was there, you're right. I shouldn't be able to turn it in if I die. The The quest works so much better of I got to go get the pocket watch and I got to get out with it. But that's not what's happening. We're playing the dice roll of there's 63 stims in the game and I need one and it only spawns on labs sometimes. And so when I get the RNG, that's when I feel like I sh the RNG should be I won the quest. Now I can yeah. turn this goddamn thing in, right? I shouldn't then have to freaking storm the gates and survive and have to kill. I have wait. I, like, and then we were talking about how the guy camping down at the exfil, for all we know, he had a quest item on him and he was sitting by and the extract waiting. waiting because he needed 56 more seconds too. So now we're calling him a rat. He might be questing. We got out with our quest items. We couldn't turn him in, even though we survived and we engaged with the, you know what I mean? So... It was like it's it just, almost like if they deleted found in raid, it solves an entire swath of these problems. Yeah, and and the and a, let me reminder to everybody: the reason why run through exists yeah. in the game is because Nikita didn't like that a bunch of Chinese players five years ago were spawning in on factory, running to the exfil instantly, and boosting their survival rate stat. Yep. It was he didn't want people boosting their stats before anybody other than that one guy yep. could see the stats unless they screenshotted it. It was it was yeah. that was it. That was what Nikita said was the reason. And then everything cascaded past that to then, oh, we need found in raid. Oh, well, found in raid is where you get uh, quest items need to be found in raid. Found in raid requires you don't get a run through even if you found in raid. Yep. And then they nerfed and then they doubled down on found in raid. It used to be. You needed a, uh, uh, I don't know the numbers exactly, but I believe it used to be you had to wait five minutes in a raid or get 300 XP. And now it's seven minutes in a raid and you need 700 or 700 XP. They, well, didn't they nerf it and then they buffed it or not? You know what I mean? But yeah. like, All, I remember I was like, Nikita, you, because when I got the red key card, killed a scav and got out on, I literally crossed all of shoreline, looted yeah. multiple rooms, killed a scav within six minutes. 
and my red key card yeah, was, was not found in raid. Yep. Yep. I don't remember them ever buffing it in terms of making it easier. I only remember them making it harder. Um, they, they, they reduced it. It yeah. was it was worse than it was at one point, literally because I, after I talked to Nikita, yeah. I'm like, Nikita. And then he was like, okay, then they changed it. Well, they changed it But it, it seems like they changed and it And made back. it worse. Because the way we used to do the guide was we would swap kits. And it was, uh, that would... That, I, remember you, I remember doing this yeah. with you, I think, yeah. on streets. We did it once. On yeah, we just... Swap, swap the shit around and then extract and you would because you only need 200 XP. They, they didn't like people doing that. So now you need 700 XP or 500 XP. Uh, and they and they literally have the amount of XP you get from picked up weapons. Uh, for I'm almost positive for that reason as well. So now it's like if I used to get 200 XP from picking up seals kit, now you'd only get 100. You know what I mean? It's like so it's anyways. So it was just, it was another one of those things where the quest design felt like it was fighting with, like, I felt like I was just a bystander in that encounter, right? You have the found and raid system, you have the run through system, and you have quests that basically just beg you to put your actual face through the cheese grater that is labs, hoping you find the one stim you're looking for. All three of those things, RNG quest design, found and raid, and run throughs, are all fighting with each other to determine the experience I have. And the experience I have was I spent 160,000 rubles on a labs card. I went into a labs raid. I killed a PMC. I ran across the map. I found the stim I needed. I found an extract. I tossed a grenade at another PMC that was camping me down there, and I made it out. What did I do wrong as the player? You know, and you know what the funny thing is? Two, the first I can't raid I my did, quest. the first raid I did yesterday, I spawned in on shoreline, uh, way back in the swamp. There's that like one, there's a house like right yeah. there. I walked five feet, opened the door, opened a, a jacket, flash drive, first item, uh, first item. Yes. I, I went over to the church. The dynamic loot meant that there was no box there. So yeah. I looked in the bowl, nothing there. I went past the shoreline seven minutes and seven seconds and i didn't see anyone didn't do it, and yeah. i didn't get a run through exactly and it's, it's and the difference between your design. experience and my experience is so arbitrary it's nothing it's 47 seconds it's not your raid wasn't more hardcore than mine you didn't engage in the game more than i did if anything less because you didn't kill a pmc for sure i should have gotten if if anything i should have been the one with a run through yeah but neither of us should be exactly exactly so it's like it's it's this isn't meaningful. This isn't real. This isn't, this isn't hardcore. It's not immersive. It's, it's arbitrary. It's, it's nothing. It's vapor. It's just like, it's just made up rules. And like, and that's such a funny, that's, that's such a funny example because it's another example, um, highlighting how the, the run through system is at odds with how they design quests. Instead of just making the two flash drives you need, you know, spawn on, you know, whatever, and you have to go get them out, you're because the this quest is just RNG the quest, find flash drives. Sometimes the first thing you find is a flash drive. And then what do you do? You've been looking for that for a week, you know, like you're, some people, you've been looking for that for a week, and now you're like, I can't leave with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the quest, if the quest was that you had to find a specific flash drive on a specific place in like, if you had to find that flash drive, if what's that quest called, what's on the flash drive or whatever. If those flash drives, if one of those flash drives was a 100% spawn, like the pocket watch when you had the quest, but it was in the water treatment plant, you can't get in and out of there without 700 XP or being in that raid for seven minutes. Right. Yeah. The quest design wouldn't have to stand in opposition. You would, it would say, hey, you get in however you want. You can kill all the rogues. You can try and sneak in. You could wait for other players to do it and then sneak in later. You can, you can do it however you want to do it, but you're not going to be able to do that and get a run through. But because the quest is literally just RNG, sometimes that RNG is the first item you find. 10 seconds into a raid is a flash drive. And then you're like, I need this so bad. There's the exfil. Where's the nearest bush? I need to prone for six minutes. Yeah, get out my phone. Like Siri, a hey, Siri set a fucking timer, right? Like, okay, no, I, I didn't mean that. Go away. <laughs> so, so it's just like, 
You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> yep. I don't know. Uh, what are the other things? Uh, they We've been trying to figure out since the wipe happened when and how you can buy the spear, the SIG spear, which is disgusting, by the way. It's a super fun gun to run. Um, and is, well, is it a D DMR? Is it a... Uh, it's uh, it's full auto. And, and uh, so it shoots a new caliber, uh, which is um, effectively 308. It's big. It's big caliber. It's uh, got good damage. Um, and it hits hard. And it's full auto. So you think of it like an SA-58 or a 308 MDR. Um, I think 20... Five round mags. I don't remember. Um, Does it have a lot of recoil? No. Or is it like feel good? It feels great. It feels it almost <laughs> too good. What's the caliber? Freaking six point eight Creedmoor, two two seven Fury. Six point eight. Yeah, six point eight five fifty one. So there's only two rounds. Um, the FMJ has thirty six pen eighty damage, and the hybrid round has forty seven pen seventy two damage. So that's a good round, right? 72 damage is a lot. Uh, and 47 pen is a lot. Something like 5, 5, 5 a one has, I believe, 44 pen and I think like 49 damage or something like that. So to have 47 pen and 72 damage is a big round. And if you if you look on it, if you look at a gun on the flea market and you like filter it so it will show you out of stock items. It'll show like Peacekeeper sells this. And when you hover over purchase, it'll say you haven't, it'll say you haven't completed the quest. So everybody every day has been like, have we figured out what quest? Have we figured out what quest? Um, and I was like, no, I actually don't know. Well, we figured I it out. Someone unlocked it on Twitter. Yeah. It's the 10th Lightkeeper quest. Hmm. Uh, so I'll never have it because I couldn't be, I couldn't be bothered. Um, to get it but that's we figured that out it is the 10th like you request uh quest uh it kill 50 pmcs on streets in the middle of the road launch a yellow flare mark some stuff they added a bunch more um i'm pretty sure that are arbitrary and weird uh, so that the other thing is, um, the, uh, okay. You remember how in the very beginning of the wipe, we talked about the, how interesting the changes to the ammo were. And we were like, okay, you know, M855 is level three peacekeeper. Now M856A1 is level four peacekeeper. Now, you know, 55A1 is off the traders. Um, a lot of the stuff, 762BP is off the traders. We, we talked about how a lot of the best items off the traders and they were actually thoughtful enough to make some of the items that were previously off the traders back on the traders. Like AP 6.3 was more accessible, which it always bothered me that it wasn't because it's really not that good of a round. Um, some of the other SMG rounds, like the, the SR2M, the SMG that shoots the shrimp rounds, all yeah. of that ammo is on the traders now, and it felt more balanced. And dude, I can find the clip. In the beginning, I was like, this, I really like this. As long as they don't just give all the good ammo as rewards or crafts after oh, no. high level quests. You willed it into fucking existence, yeah. didn't you, with your voodoo? So I have the I have the M855A1 craft and the 762 BP craft now. Uh and they're both locked behind high level tasks. And both of the crafts are, in my opinion, too good too good like uh the 55a1 craft is like one blue gunpowder two blue gunpowder and 180 rounds of m855 which you just buy for two dollars a round off and you get 180 rounds of a 55a1 now it takes seven and a half hours but like i just run it 24 7 yeah i mean what, what that means is you don't have it for seven and a half hours and then you always have it with a seven and a half hour delay. Yeah. Like hundred percent. What it means a delay is right now time. I have 1200 rounds because yeah. I like using P nineties and MP sevens and I'm not like, I'm not always using M fours. Right. So as long as I'm not always using M fours, I'm always getting that. And then which, the, which uh, means you're, which means in a couple weeks, 
everybody's going to be dying only to BP and eight five five A one and blah yep. blah blah. Right? Like yep. it's and then it makes the BP, it effectively infinite. I got the BP craft and it's uh, it's too good as well, in my opinion. Um, I don't remember what it is. It's once again just a few gunpowders. Um, yeah, it's like a drill and a wrench that don't get consumed. They're the ones that like you know it, it's a required thing, but they don't get yeah. consumed. Um, it's ninety rounds of PP, which is purchasable from the trader. Uh, one green gunpowder and one hot rod, and you turn it into ninety rounds of BP in seven hours. So it's it's a long time, but as long as you don't perma run that caliber, you could just perma run the craft. And it kind of made me sad because it 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 feels like it undermines the point. Like every other fucking change. Yeah, the the point of it. The like I don't I don't know. This uh, this always becomes a conversation about casuals and chads and I hate that because like it's just to me it's not about that. It's just about like playing the game. To me, the point of this was you can always buy ammo from the traders, but if you want the best stuff, go into a goddamn raid and find it. Yeah. But what it turned into was instead of everybody, if you, as long as you can make it to level 42 and get max traders, you can get this ammo. It's as long as you can get to max traders and get to level 50 and complete this quest, now you can get it. You know what I mean? It's just like it instead it just adds more barriers. And uh, yeah, because well, because the problem is that they're they're way too heavy handed with their distribution of loot. So if someone would be like, okay, we are going to introduce small quantities of yeah. let's say BP out into the environment, what they would do is introduce exactly the amount that would mean that there was always X hundred rounds being X filled from a raid globally. Yeah, in every raid. And that would be then hoarded for enough of a delay that yeah, yeah. once two weeks go by, everybody using the 762 guns are all using yeah. that one caliber. Yeah. Um because it needs to be like not every other box is yeah. a 60 round box. It needs to be like 15 loose rounds. Yeah. You know, like in two spots on the map. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what, whatever the amount is, yeah. right? Like, and again, that's like not, not an easy thing. But what ends up happening is, it's they remove it entirely. People bitch that it's not there. Then they put it on the traders, and people bitch that it's everywhere. So then they yeah. remove it, and then people say, "Well, I can't get it." So then they go, "Okay, well then we'll just make a craft without realizing that that, that a craft just means is in, just infinite supply." Buying it with a delay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Like exactly. So, um, like the craft is no different than them making peacekeeper reset every seven hours instead of three. Yep. Right. I get my 90 every seven hours instead of three. Yep. It's the same it thing. Adds, it, it adds a delay. And, and it's, it's literally a one time delay because after that yeah. you effectively always have it. Yeah. Um, so, so I was a little disappointed to see that. Now, some of the benefits still stand. Like one of the things I praised was the fact that you can find boxes of 55A1, you can find boxes of 56A1, you can find boxes of BP, you can find boxes of SAIAP and MAIAP and 7 and 40 and BS and BP like it does seem that there's more better ammo spawning in raids, which is nice for sure. But mm -hmm. it but it's nice to find those things when those things feel scarce. Yeah. And and what we have now is what we've had in the past, which is scarce for uh me, but you're scarce for thee, but not for me. You know, if you're yeah. new to the game, you find 22 rounds of BP, you're pogged out because you're like, I can't like this is whatever. But it's like I have a thousand rounds because I can just I have infinite supply. I can just craft it anytime I want. And so I was, while I do like that the, the, um, the ammo is findable in raid, what I would have liked alongside that was real scarcity. I really, really wouldn't have minded if the best five, five, six ammo I can get through the hideout, through traders, through anything, no matter what level I am is five, six, a one. And if you want better than that, 
go engage with the game, man. Find it. Find it on scavs. Uh, some ADAR scavs can still have 55A1. You can find it in boxes on the floor. I just, it just would, it just feels, it would have felt more fair and like, not fair. I know fair is like a mother freaking curse word to some of the Tarkov people. It would be fair. It just would have been, I don't know. It just feels, no, it feels to me like making the craft that good and that many rounds just undermines it. And, um, and, and yet again, yet again, puts, puts the emphasis on not playing the game. Not going yeah, into play raids. The, play the mini, play the, the mobile mini Play game. the hideout until you have 1200 rounds and then, and then play the game. You know what I mean? Whereas it felt like, you know what I mean? Like once again, and that's why I said this, ends, this always ends up coming back to casuals for Chad's. Well, Chad should be rewarded for this and casual. Well, no casuals should have access. And, and I think there's a lot of good conversations there. I'm not even saying those are bad, but to me, it's like, we should be playing the game <laughs> to get the stuff. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, it's whatever. Um, uh, they did a patch. Uh, they did a patch the other day, and uh, it was pretty good. Um, they uh, so fixed incorrect ammo penetration and damage calculations in some situations. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um. Some little things, I'll just go through the nice things, which is uh, fixed incorrect behavior of the rogues when defending the water treatment plant. Thank Christ, dude. We went lighthouse and they work again. Is, isn't it crazy? Veritas, this is how this is how deep down the rabbit hole I am. You know the exact, like, the exact criticisms I've had about the rogues since lighthouse was coming to the game? I'm so thankful that the rogues are that bad again. Because of how much worse they had been for the past few months. What, like totally dumb and cheesable? No. For the past, the last two months of the last wipe and all of this wipe, if you set foot in the water treatment plant and shot anything, every single rogue in the entire compound get up and they just run to your location. All of them. They get all the roofs, all the ground rogues, they just run to you. So that's how it's been and that was bad. Yeah. And now, and now are they, they dumb and farmable? Now they're back to being dumb and farmable unless you don't know how to farm them and then they're going to beam you from the cross the map with their 50 cows and with perfect accuracy. So it's like yeah. what but I used... You know the, the place to exactly. that, like... What I yeah. used to criticize, I thought it was, I'm, I'm happy to have that back because of how dumb, how bad the it meta, was. The meta to take advantage of... The meta to take advantage of their terrible design is the only fun mini yeah. game that exists on lighthouse yeah and the new meta the new meta was th so the old meta of cheesing the rogues was at least moving through the water treatment plant for the past two months it was dude i can pull up and i'm no shade to these youtubers because i i'm glad they did it because i err on the side of if the ai is going to be designed bad i'd rather more people know how to cheese them than not honestly until they designed better ai so i wasn't even mad that the youtubers were doing this but you could there's there were 18 youtube videos about this room, building three, first floor, west side, there's a room. In this room, you shut the door and you sit and you hold and they all just come and funnel into the door and you just farm them. And then when you kill them, so they just like run into the door and you just like shoot them through the door and they just Yeah, stand they there open the and, door yeah. and you shoot them, you close the door, then they open the door, you shoot them, they close the door, you open the door. Uh, people found out that their AI, they cannot walk into uh, locked rooms. Because they, they won't know if the door's open or not. So if you have the key, you can open up this room and they'll never come in. But they'll chase you and just stand outside. And so you can just pop, 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 pop. It was just so toxic, dude. It was just so lame. Hell but yeah, if you dog. didn't know that, if you didn't know, then you're screwed, bro. They're all coming for you. They all have God mode. They know where you are at all times. They're coming for you. 12 mm -hmm. freaking aimbot AI. So they fixed that. Thank Christ. Um, they fixed a, uh, there was an infinite loading scav bug that I've had. I've gotten like eight times to swipe. They fixed that. Um, they, uh, ba -ba -ba. they fixed the airdrop loot that was not found in raid. Uh, they finally fixed that. So airdrops are found in raid. 
and they reduce the amount of um, noise the snow makes when you're crunching around on it, which is a very welcome change. It was way too loud. I, I was I was running around. Actually, no, I was walking around on woods today going, they reduced it, and it's this bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I, I still think it's too loud, but I'll take what I can get. Oh yeah, it was, yeah, it was I, I was like, this is so fucking annoying. Yeah, I'll take. And, and all it did was get. make me go step, step, step. Stop. Yep. Listen, because there's like some ambient bullshit that constantly makes me hear yep. like what sounds like footsteps, and it's sprint, sprint, sprint. Ha ha ha! Stop. Wait. Listen. There's footsteps coming over the ridge. I'm sitting here and I'm going to hold because I can't take a footstep in that direction. Yep. Because then they'll know I'm here. So I just have to wait and hold. I killed a level like 58 dude that was all juiced up. Yep. Um, up at the, uh, the like you set camp on woods. Yep. I just walked up to the table, sat there and he was over by like the tent with like the, the, the box in it and whatever. And he just sprinted over and I just went, Fucking yep. shot him in the head and the snow came and uh now all the the bushes uh the leaves are dead so like you can see through the bushes a lot more and everyone's like dude the snow is great like w nobody's gonna be able to rat we're gonna see all the rats meanwhile it has the exact opposite effect crunching the snow is so loud that people are even more petrified to move than they ever have been myself included and everybody's sitting still even more <laughs> so yeah. Dude, when you're like three manning, and it's just crunch, 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 I don't think we talked about this, but like, um, I have now, now granted arena does not have the new armor system. The armor system may or may not swing it completely in the opposite direction in yeah. like a bad way or a good way. I, I don't know. It depends on which side you're on. Um, but it got to the point a couple over the last few weeks where, where I had to say, there's been a lot of changes over the years with Tarkov, different eras. I remember back in the day, all my highlight videos where it's like, you don't need good gear to win fights. And it was me with like a Makarov yeah. scav, one tapping fast MT dudes in their fucking face. Yeah. Like, you know, with a with a Grotch killing three man squads, just fully juiced out, fat fast MT Ford armor, yeah. you know, whatever, right? Um and then there were periods where it's like if you don't have the best of the best there, you know, and, and we were, and there was, there were periods of time where veterans were probably either. I don't know if they were rightfully or wrongfully gaslighting the people complaining about the gear diff. Yeah. Basically yeah. Being like, no, you just have to play different. Then there was a period where I think we were all like, yeah, the, the gear different, you know, I, I don't know. It's hard to know yeah. what's rose tinted glasses, what's different game, different, yeah. you know, like maybe it was easy because even the juiced out guys only had 300 hours in the game because that says yeah. how long the game yeah, was out. Yeah, so yeah. they just weren't good. You know, there's a million things, right? But over the last couple of weeks um, in arena and arena is 99% combat. Yeah. I basically said Tarkov is 98% gear and 2% skill. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And the reason why I say that is because every single fucking game, there's two kits that are always, the leaderboard is always 14 and 2, and then the next guy is 3 kills and negative, 3 and 7, 3 and 7, 2, and then 0, 0. Yeah. On one team, and the other team is exactly the same. Yeah. The fucking, the yeah. fucking butcher kit. Oh, yep. There's Risty, never, SA58, there's never, hex grid. there's never been, it has everything. It has yep. a level five helmet and face shield that covers yep. top, nape, ears, eyes, jaws. Yep. It has a hex grid class six armor full that there's no shoulder. There's no it, armpits. It's, it's the entire it thorax. The whole torso, yep. There's no armpits yet. And then you have SA58 with uh, shorty. Yep. So it's, what some semblance of ergonomics, whatever that is. I mean, it's like 
you can ADS yeah. almost instantly with this fucking thing, even though it only has 33 ergonomics. Yeah. But it's, but it's maneuverable. It has a laser. It has a decent dot on it. It has 50 round drum mag of M62, which is 44 pen, 79 damage. Yep. And another drum mag of the same, and then a 30 round mag of M61. Yep. It has a flashbang. It has a splint. It has a Zagustin, which prevents bleeds for three minutes, which is every round, the whole yeah. round. You yeah. pre pop it. And a Vaseline, which is th- three, f- five minutes of pain of- kill. Of pain kill. So you Vaseline Augustine, you have no pain, you have no bleeds for the whole round. Yep. You have class five armor everywhere, class six armor, all the bullets. The gun has it's got recoil, but it's like it's like this. Yeah. It's most got a of lot, the engagements are close enough that the yeah. recoil isn't that big of a deal. And okay, so then compare that to um the What's another kit that is really good, but still is like balanced? Um, so Chimera is one. <clears throat> Did they change? Whoa, 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 what? Oh, sorry. This is favorites. I was like, well, the order oh. is all wrong, but I was looking at my favorites, which is unordered. Um, so Chimera is one that I have that is the end of the uh Mars the Scout? Where, where the fuck is Chimera? I don't think it was Scout. Yeah, end of Scout. It's end okay. of Scout. Was that the um, Val one? No. So Chimera is it's a fast MT with oh, the, the integrated the rack, rack headphones, yeah. which are kind of not great. Yeah. No face shield. So it's a level four helmet that covers top nape. That's it. Yep. You have class four armor that's just thorax. Yep. You have MAI AP ammo, which is good ammo, great ammo. But you have an AK-104 with kind of a janky dot that's a little yeah. annoying. Um, And 30-round mags. Yep. You have a couple of stems and a Salewa. What's um, the armor? It's the A-18 rig. Armored chest rig class 4. Yeah. Um, you also get an MP5K with rip ammo, as if you're ever going to yeah, use. Yeah, Lamau. Like that's kind of a pointless thing. Um, oh, and and also the the um, the butcher gets the fucking sword. <laughs> it, it, of course, it gets a sword, right? Like no one uses it, but it naturally gets a sword. Whereas this kid gets the machete. Um, and it's like this kit, Chimera, loses ninety nine out of a hundred yeah. times. If you if you face yourself and one's using butcher, one's using chimera, yeah, you just lose. Yep, it's it's crazy, dude. Because I and I have access to the MP7 kit, which is a fucking sick kit. Yeah, um, the AUG kit, which is like eight five five A one. So good. It's got, um, it's got uh, decent headphones. It's got class five armor. You get a couple of yeah. So it, there are some there are some good options, and yet. There's there's multiple pieces of it. I can fight literally every other kit, and if they're a good player with a, with a, with any kit in the game, except for the wrist T guy and the yeah. and the uh, butcher, sorry, the butcher and the Vulcan, the Vulcan one. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, although the Vulcan's a little bit more balanced in that the Vulcan, it's a long boy. Oh yeah, the RPK. It, the RPK yeah. with a long ass fucking barrel yeah. and like ninety five round drum, so it's it's a little clumsy in like yeah. close quarters. Yeah, but the butcher isn't clumsy. You're, no. They're literally shift yep. W sprinting around, so they're getting the advantage of net code. They're spraying now. So here's the biggest thing: you don't have in every other shooter, like in CS:GO, the movement, the net code is better, the sounds better, and the movement is consistent and smooth. Yeah. In that when someone peeks, it's like you have your crosshair placement and it's whoop, yeah. Whoop. In Tarkov, it's always like Yeah. So yeah. You, you it's you never have the smooth thing. So I can be holding an angle, waiting, the guy peeks, and the first bullet will sometimes 
uh, this is another thing too. I'm like interrupting myself with all these side ideas, but there's also the left shoulder peak fucking animation oh, yeah. on some of the guns. They end up like this. Yeah. They turn the corner and they're like this. Yeah. Um, depending on the build and whatever, for some reason, dude, no, like literally the guns are pointing straight up. Really? So, so the enemy's guns? The enemy's yeah. guns. Yeah. Now on their end, it's not. It's just, yeah. But, but literally they turn the corners and it's like this. So if I have 855A1 or even with the Val, it's going to take two or three shots at least. Yeah. I, I mean, against class six, you're talking multiple shots. It's going to take, sure, right? For sure. Their arms are constantly blocking their head, and I generally have to hit two, three, four headshots on the face shield, face shield, face shield, penetrate, they die. Yep. Not face shield, face shield, top of the helmet, top of the helmet. Yep. Well, and now now I still need two more shots to kill them, but they turn, they swing, and they aim center mass, and it goes, poof, and you die to one chest shot yep. because you have class four. And they have M61. They reload it. And they never reload because they have a 50-round drum. They're drugged up, and no one can hear anything because of the suppression effect where as soon as you pull the trigger, footstep.mp3 turns off. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So what happens is you you hear, and then there's a guy in front of you when he yep. you heard him down the hallway running, and then yep. you heard gunshots, and then he's suddenly there. Yep. Um. It's literally it's literally in the butcher kit. impossible. I, I've I, I've won in like a hundred straight up aim duels when I'm waiting and someone's waiting and it's a butcher. I've won maybe one or two out of a hundred. Yeah. Every other kit is a 50-50 with equal skill people with every other gear if they don't have a helmet or a face shield. It's so fucking lame. And the the Chimera kit, it requires more XP to unlock than the Butcher kit. Yeah. The Butcher kit is higher up in the in the chain than the Chimera kit. Yeah, it's crazy. I can't believe they haven't addressed that. Like, that's the most unbelievable thing. Why would you use anything else? And then, like we've talked about before, to the people that use that all day, they're like, I don't want to use this anymore. But what the hell else am I going to use? Like, it's the best kit in the game. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. It's easy mode. And so th there's a, we have a, there's like a Tarkov Arena League, uh, like Discord. Um, okay. Because we're trying to avoid cheaters. So we just play like 10 v 10, oh. like pickup games. They've got a whole queue thing built in. It's really cool. That's there's, sick. I, I also didn't realize, like, have you done any custom games on Arena? No, none. So, like, literally, they have this whole queue thing set up where, um, you like, you know, could type your in-game name. It like moves you into the channel, splits up the teams. You have like a whole team captain. You integrate it into Discord is like almost like the reaction buttons where you it takes all the people. Team captain chooses one person. The next guy gets to choose two. You like ban maps. Um, and then literally the last option is butcher banned. Yes or no. And I've never played in a game where at, literally 10 out of 10 people say no butcher. That's a, literally a rule that we have built in to like... Whatever the closest you could get to like pro pickup league like games, it's literally butcher. We we refuse to play with it, and the games are way better. Yeah, me, me me playing against people infinitely better than me in the world. Some of the best players in the world. I can compete against the um, better players. Yeah, with any any kit in the fucking world. Yeah, except when they have the butcher. They are unkillable, unwinnable, and and here's the thing: there are plenty of people that are going to say, "I have no trouble fighting against Butch." Lies. Chances, chances are you're fucking D plus twelve hundred ARP playing against bots that don't are know how to use garbage, butcher. yeah, dog shit that don't know how to use it. There's no way to win when you have negative four nanoseconds to yeah. react and they one shot you and you can't one shot them and you're you fighting like win landmark skill level with the butcher yeah. you know what i mean it's like and it's funny because like classic video game logic would tell me that that guy like butcher shouldn't be able to sprint their max speed should be walk you know what i mean like in every other video game where you put on the juggernaut armor you're slow as hell dude well, and see, the interesting thing is that when you look at the kit, it's real low profile. You have kind of a... Now, it's a small gun. Now, granted, it has a, a drum mag, which yeah. would be fucking heavy as hell. But it's like... You've... The the the, the wrist T or the, whatever the, the, uh, the slick... The, the hex grid is like... Looks like a t-shirt. Yeah. 
Still. So you really do look like low profile. Still. They're they're the they're that the wristy. fastest people. Yeah. And because they're so confident, they sprint around, make taking advantage of the fact that no one can hear the footsteps and they get the benefit of the net code. So literally, it's it's two seconds into a round, and there's a, a two butchers in our spawn. Yeah. And we're like, what the fuck? We never heard the footsteps because they just sprint through the middle. Yeah. And you can't peek and hold because you'll go bang, bang, bang. You'll hit them like this. Their arms go up and block the shots, and then you're dead with the first bullet. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it, it's there's like, I've never been so passionate about hating that kit. Now, and here's the thing. I don't necessarily, like, I think they probably should, like, nerf it, but that's not my first gut reaction. My first gut reaction is fix the sound. Well, yeah. Because that is the, that is, like, should be one of the inherent <laughs> balancing ways, or like, balancing things where it's, like, I made a list. I was going to put this in one of my videos and didn't, but I made a list of, you know, like, in an RPG, when you create a character, it's like, you've got 15 skill points to allocate. Yeah. I'll put four into strength, five into intelligence. I'm going to turn down charisma and I'm yeah. going to put something into endurance, right? Like there is high pen bullet, high damage bullet. You can hear things. You can't hear things, but you have face and head protection. You have great stims. You have tons of utility, flashbangs, grenades. You have long acting uh, meds. You have quick acting meds. Yeah. Um, you have um, high ergonomics, low profile guns. Uh, you have guns with little recoil, super controllable. Yeah. Um, you have guns with variable optics that are, uh, or like really nice, clear, short range optics, right? Like all of these are all bullet points. Yeah. The way that they should gear score balance it is like, okay, the top tier kits, you get to choose seven of the 15 things. Yeah. The next tier down is you get to choose five. Mm hmm until you get to choose two and it's like yeah i'm gonna have like uh decent meds and like a pistol or like yeah. a, a, a pistol no meds and like headphones or, or, or whatever yeah. right like but the butcher gets 14 out of 15 yeah. and and the one it doesn't get is you can't hear anything and the sound is broken so it's not a minus because yeah, none nobody of us hear, can anything. hear anything yeah but the problem is that we have the illusion that we can hear in that we hear a bunch of footsteps and then all of a sudden there's explosions and gunfire. Yeah. And I've got so many clips. It's it's the most triggering thing where I was on the site, holding the site, the timer's ticking down. I'm on bay five, which is just all shipping containers, yeah. multiple levels. It's pretty chaotic. And I'm like, 1v1, I'm holding the angle. I hear the guy running and I hear clunk on metal. Yeah. And I go, Bah, 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 pre firing the corner. Yep. And then all of a sudden, shot in the head because he went, uh, hit the metal and then went up the ramp. Yep. You know, like the slanted red container right yep. above the site? He went up the ramp. But because I was pre firing, you literally hear metal clink and then never hear another footstep. Yep. Because of the suppression effect. Now, surprisingly enough, when I mentioned it to Nikita, he said, We're aware and we're working on it. Which is weird because like it doesn't seem like a bug. It seems like an intentional... Yeah, it seems like something that's intended that just sucks. Yeah, so that was like, oh shit. Yeah. That's encouraging at least because to me, that's one of those things that like I thought I would have to cry for three years to get him to change it. <laughs> yeah. But it's the, it's the most toxic thing because what happens is people crab walk until one guy sees someone and goes, blah, 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 and then everybody shift W because it's like I have... Yeah, I have, I like, have a silent. In, what's the perk? Dead silence. Dead silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And and I get what you were saying earlier, where you're like, before we nerf, <laughs> in a perfect world, before we nerf butcher, let me play the game where the third person animations work, and I can see my enemy's head, where the sound works, where I don't have aim punch, where the suppression effect doesn't mask footsteps. Like you know what I mean? Like let me play a fair game first. And then that ratio of how many times I lose might change. And then we might have to nerf Butcher less than we think we do. Yeah. But because he has everything going for him and he has all of the bugs going for him, where if you're the first to swing, you get the peekers advantage, you get the netcode advantage, your third party character, you're holding your gun in front of your face, meaning headshots are really hard to hit. 
It's like if you just have all that, then it's it, yeah. Yeah, the, like the only way you counter that is by you are ready for them. You're at an off angle so that they can't pre-fire a common angle. Yeah. So you kind of surprise and ambush them, and you can hit two headshots if you have a decent decent bullet. Like even the G28, that's nine nine three. Yeah, that's a fucking sick round. Yeah. The problem is, is that the only chance I have at winning is that I am ready. I'm ready, and I can't be ready if I can't hear you. Yeah. If you sprint around a corner. Yeah. Or you peek up uh, from across the map and you're like, uh, the, cause there's 97 angles, right? Yeah. If I hear you, I can at least try to put my crosshair yep. on your head, but instead, and they don't have to, they don't have to do the one tab headshot, like CSGO AK yeah. clean. They can, they can play it like call of duty, which is the way you play call of duty. No one ever aims for the head with call of duty. You just aim center mass. Correct. Yes. And as long as you're the first one that aims center mass and you can keep your bullets on target, yeah. you win the fight. Yeah. That's what they can do. If yeah. we do that, dude, the number of times I have 17 hits yeah. for 200 damage and I'm using the AUG with 855A1, he hits two and I die and yeah. I hit 17. Yep. And and that kit is a lower gear score than mine. Yep. Like, fuck right off. Yep. I'm sorry. Yep. Dude. Yep. Oh. And it, it's sad because this is exactly what I was frustrated with a month ago. You know what I mean? When I was playing, it's it's and it's just only gotten worse because more people have the kit. But and, and so what that does, and I think the interesting takeaway from that is is that I am now going to be a little bit more try to be more honest and or skeptical of the idea that like is common whether it's from me now or me in the past or other people now other people like the just the community yeah. idea that you can overcome if you're a better player you can oh, overcome yeah. the gear diff i want to say like if you're a new player in tarkov now okay r rewind to l the entirety of 2023 before the yeah. armor the new armor hitboxes if there was a player running the butcher if you didn't have the butcher, yeah, which is ninety nine percent of the player base yeah. is not running that, then you cannot win. Yeah, like like as close to you, it's impossible for you to kill them. Yeah, which is, it wasn't ever like that. Yeah, yeah, but the average player, if you want to try and, I mean, the only way you'll kill them is if they're running two hundred meters away with their back turned to you and you make sure that you can hit like headshot, yeah. headshot, headshot. Or you shot. throw a grenade at them and it gets lucky. You know what I mean? It's like, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. But otherwise in, in every scenario where it's like you, two people are fighting each other. Yeah. <laughs> you lose every time. And it's not because they're like, it's a crush. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. Oftentimes that player is actually playing well beneath their skill level. They're not employing tactics. They're just running at you. Like, you know what I mean? Because they can rely on the gear. Like, yeah, like and, you said, crutch. Yeah. And there were multiple people that I were playing against that were in squads of, I actually think they were cheating. Like, I would have said they were cheating, where, or I, I still think they are for other reasons, <laughs> that were running the Butcher and um, one of the other kits, I think the, the probably the Guardian, um, where they ended up swapping and they were, like, using, I think they swapped to, like, the Val kit, which the Val kit is fucking sick. yeah it's good it's a sick kit and we shat on them we went from going zero and five to be it was unplayable to being like these guys are not only cheating um but also the gear is cheating to then suddenly they all went negative and we would like five won them on multiple games uh and it's like damn how incredible is it that like if you're not cheating and using this gear, it's unwin uh, unwinnable. If you are cheating, I mean, yeah, like of course. Um, but you can be cheating and not have it and still get outplayed. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I saw we uh this happened like a a little bit a few days before the last week's episode, but we didn't talk about it. Was they they did the, like a little roadmap for arena, and it got me really yep. excited, really excited. 
Uh, improvements to the ranked matchmaking system to provide a balanced matchmaking for players use in a match using closely matched equipment. That is, you know, we talked at length about the matchmaking, whatever. Adding unranked mode to the game, please, God. Uh, synchronizing Escape from Tarkov and Escape from Tarkov Arena profiles, experience calculation, skill mastering. Still a lot of questions about that, but they put it on the roadmap. <laughs> Uh, custom games, adding the ability to customize the availability of presets, changing the number of rounds required to win, etc. Dude, I'll play all day with my community if I can set up custom games and we can, and I can, I can choose what kit, you know, everyone's using this kit, everyone's using that kit, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, that, that was what I was going to say please. too. It's actually, the custom games now, I, doing that like 10, 10 man league thing, I was like, incredibly impressed there's like join server there's a list of servers yeah you click on a thing they're password protected you enter your password it puts you into a thing where it's like it has like the five man slots on each team yeah. and you can click on a thing to, it's like why is this so good yeah now, there's a bunch of bugs around it that make it really yeah. fucking annoying and it kind of bugs out but like i'm like I would have never guessed that they would have something like that in there so expanding that makes me very excited uh, adding last hero game mode is sick because I definitely want more game modes and adding new locations with support for all game modes. So the roadmap was, uh, got me very excited, man. Very excited. I want customs games and I want unranked really bad, really bad. Obviously I want better matchmaking experience, but like, I don't, there's no definition of what that means. So, and therefore I don't know what to, what to expect what of that. Well, what they described was exactly what I did in my video saying, this is what the community has been crying for. And if they do that, it won't work. And here's why. And then they just, so I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm cynical that it's yeah. going to be that, which is you choose your gear beforehand. Yeah. 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 Which I think is it, 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 it for, not only does it not solve the problem for a massive portion of the community, yeah. but it also is mega restricting. Yeah. And I, I think we, we talked about, we this talked a bunch. about that. Yeah. And why um, I was telling Valiant yeah. about your idea earlier. I was like, did you see Veritas's video on how, the matchmaking? And he was like, no. And I described it to him and he was like, why is it not like that? <laughs> like, that would be so much fun. I was like, I don't know, man. And then we got the little bit of a debate today, this morning. There was supposed to be. Now, they never said it was going to be this big patch, but they tweeted out the roadmap. Then they said all these features are coming in the coming patches. Then I they, was expecting 48 hours we were going to get all those things. And yeah. just, instead, a fucking week and a half later, we a get... A week and a half later, we get a tweet saying they're taking the game down for three hours. They're doing a patch. And there were two changes. Fix the number of issues causing connection loss and making experience multipliers for each map. That was the entire patch. Job basted, bro. <laughs> I was like, I hopped on this morning and I was like, I might play Arena if they add unranked. And now you just get twice as much XP when you play Sawmill. And I was like, oh, God. Yeah, but well, because nobody plays Sawmill. And, and, and here's the thing. That's not, uh, I don't think that's a bad change. No. To, to, to like that, exactly. Sawmill rounds take much longer. And so if you're trying to rank up your kit, your XP per hour is drastically reduced if you play Sawmill. So everyone takes off because Sawmill. Because the, the, the meta for all the people like me who have been playing every day since it came out is you you run equator because it's the i have 400,000 xp divided by 6,000 per game is 67 games 67 games taking an average of 15 minutes is 1,005 minutes divided by 60 is 17 hours 17 yeah. hours i need to play to unlock my next kit i want that's assuming a 15 minute games yeah but sawmill so, games are 22 minutes. So you're like, no way I'm getting sawmill on here. I need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't that the change was bad. The change is good. But I was just like, I really thought we were getting more than that, dude. Oh, yeah, it was something that it was something that it, it's a good change, but it's something that no one asked for. Yeah. And it's not it. No one asked for it. It wasn't any of the things we asked for. And it wasn't any of the things they said to expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. The uh, our foot is amputated and bleeding all over the floor, and they put a band aid on the scrape we had on our arm. And it was like we needed to get there eventually, but like, yeah, <laughs> we're bleeding all, all over the floor, man. So, uh, I don't know. I don't I'm know. Really, I'm really, I'm really, I'm genuinely kind of worried, man. Like, I, 
if if the next update is a W, then that would like reset it completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the changes that we've seen, the things that they've said, then this update now, yeah, has me just thinking like, like I don't want to say like, oh, this game is gonna die. I, no, I hate the but... fucking phrase. But but it but it's like it could if they. I genuinely believe now naturally this is like you know Veritas being Veritas but if they like did all the fucking things that I said in my two arena videos yeah that 200,000 more people would be playing the game and would enjoy it yeah. a lot more for literally months and months and months and months and months to come yeah. as opposed to what they're doing now which is people are like oh I'm having fun with arena and I know 4 days from now they will have moved on 100% but, in, but instead, they're like trying to discount my criticisms because they're having fun now without realizing yeah. that there's nothing that keeps them playing. Then there's too many yeah. frustrations that are going to push them away. The game is deeply fun for a few days, and yep. and and that and that it falls off a cliff, dude. It's like a Tarkov highlight video when you look at the analytics. It's a straight up line, and then boom, it's just like. So when you're in that four days, you're like, bro, what do you mean? I'm having fun. And then you're just like, never want to launch the game again. And you just don't, you know what I mean? And so like, I hope I really want them to, to bring some staying power to it because when I was having fun with it, I was having the most fun I had had in the Tarkov universe in years. Those first few days yeah, were like 17 hours and had fun. Yeah. Like... Those first few days were deeply, unbelievably fun. So I really hope that they bring some staying power to it, but. Holy fuck, dude! I I have their Twitter up, and they're like the uh, trailer oh, auto yeah. played, and it has the original recoil, and I'm looking at it going, wow, it was fucking unplayable. <laughs> like I I never played it with, uh, well, actually I did for a little, yeah, I think right, you did for a lot, um, <clears throat> with the original recoil. Yeah, you're right. Um, wait, it was, did it? It was it was uh it was ten days, it was ten to ten to eleven days. From the minute Arena came out to when the patch came out with the updated recoil. And then I think it was less than 48 hours after the wipe happened. They added the new recoil too. So right. you would have played it for just under two weeks with old recoil. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I but think it's like, I, but you forget how the later you guns. forget how bad the old recoil is. Like you got used to the you new recoil was so intuitive. You just got used to it. It felt like it yeah, was yeah. you had always had the new recoil because it just was so intuitive. Yeah. I'm just like seeing the clip of the HK aiming down sights and it's going. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and for a moment, I'm like, fuck, I don't want the HK that I've been grinding for. And I'm like, wait, that's the old shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the new oh, ones. That reminds me, bro. This is so random, but this is the last thing we were going along. This is so random. You know how in Tarkov, the SAS M1A always looks so goofy. It looks like you're just like holding it way out here. You are. Ham Bino had the, that gun, the SAS M1A, and every time I see somebody that has it, I'm always like, oh, dude, like that gun looks so goofy to me, whatever. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Come here. And the, the MOE buttstock is not touching your shoulder. Yeah. I said, throw that on the ground. I gave him my SR25. He picked it up. Buttstock is nestled in the shoulder. It's literally because your character is holding the yeah. M1A out. I never knew that. I always I always use that as an example. I was like, it always looks like that, but it really is. You're just genuinely holding the M1A out like this. Next time you play with someone, have them do the left shoulder and like ADS. I want to know what you th think it looks like because th there's the the kit that's mouse, which is the uh, it's one of the the end game ones where it has the foul, but it's got like the twenty round polymer mags. Okay. I think it has like maybe the NHHS on top. It's got the suppressor. Yep. It's got like a, a and because it has like a long, it's got like a, a, a straight grip in the front. You're like this. So when you shoulder it, you're like this. Oh. That's one of the other ones. The mouse kit is another one that the cheaters love. Um, that's just like. That's and so weird. And it looks exactly like that. You're literally like this. And especially when you left shoulder it. It That's looks so it, it looks kind of like the old canted bullshit. Chicken wing, yeah, yeah. It's that all over again, except actually worse. Um, oh man. Yeah, some of them are super scuffed. Yeah. So I just found that to be freaking hilarious. But uh, yeah. So uh, that's the stuff. That's what's going on with Tarkov. That's what's going on with Arena. 
Uh, the Tarkov patch was largely a W. Uh, they did not, they have not fixed the vaulting into all the, ex, all the exploitable vaulting things, which is very sad, but they, we did get some fixes in there. We got the fountain raid, uh, airdrop. We got the snow arena. We got a little bit of a debate, but, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm so hopeful. Lots of, lots of good stuff. We'll see how she goes, you know? We'll see how she goes. But thank you guys for hanging. We appreciate it. As always, if you like this content and you want to see more of it, patreon.com slash the podcast pod. You can get one additional episode. We have tiers that you can get access to this episode early, all sorts of fun stuff. If you want to be whenever awesome, I have all these, whenever I have all this fucking IRL interesting stories or juicy shit that I literally don't want to, I don't want 20,000 people to hear. That's the shit that I yeah, save for the PP. If I'm you want to see our PP podcast patreon then hit the link uh but yeah so thank you guys thank you guys for hanging thank you guys for supporting thank you guys for enjoying the content and uh we will definitely see y'all on the next one adios